Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to another edition of The Gray Area. I am Mr. Bennett, the 7B president. Shout out to the Fogley Free out there. I am joined by my 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 co-host, Grooming and Reviews 101, a.k.a. the Ghost of Sparta, a.k.a. Peter, a.k.a. Bariotis. Yes, my brother. Pablo, tu mucanes, it's a lie. Prospera some simera. Awesome, awesome. That sound that just sounded good. Yeah. That's now I know why so, the Greek guys get all the ladies over here because you guys y'all just start speaking Greek and the women just can't resist it. So okay. so now I now I know some of your secret right there. Now I have a lesson for you today. Uh, they have a lesson. Your name in Greek is Pavlo. Pavlo. Yeah. Okay, I'll take that. I'll take that. Yes. And our current our last uh, prince who's a surviving member of the last crown, his mm. name is Pavlo too. So there's a little nice. history lesson too on top of nice. that. Nice. So, uh, how are you, my brother? How are we doing today? I'm doing good. You know, busy weekend. Uh, I was trying to finish my taxes off, but I never got to it. So, tomorrow night I'll be uh, hunkering down. I said, we got a refund coming back. I'm just trying to keep more of my money so I don't have to pay any more out. But, but, uh, you know, but just a very busy weekend, you know, just grinding really up to the show. Uh, you know, uh, doing stuff, and then I gotta after the show, I gotta start to shut it down and get ready for the work week. So, so yeah, so the weekends definitely get um, definitely feel a lot more compressed. But uh, you know, just fortunate that uh, we have the health again. That's one of our topics for today's show is dealing with it. And so I'm just grateful that I have the health and fitness to do what I do. And uh, you know, at my at my age, you know, being uh, over fifty, but but uh, you know, it's good to you know know that I can still do those things, but just want to, again, greet everyone for, again, joining us tonight. Again, thank you. We understand that it's the beginning of the week, right, uh, Peter? It's the beginning of the work uh, of the week. Yes, it is. But we are, um, you know, certainly grateful that you guys uh, are going to be stopping in uh, through the course of the show. As you can see on the bottom, our, our, um, our cash apps are scrolling. If you feel uh, so moved, we appreciate any support that you uh, give us by dropping something in our cash apps. But uh, more importantly, uh, we also appreciate any um any uh, uh, gifts to the channel self support the BMU network uh, through certainly uh, your um, your messages and 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 uh, you know your, anything that you get you, you know sna- uh, group chats and and uh, you know any contributions that you uh, help this network to grow again we have content for seven days of the week so again we have you know we have on um, you know every, uh, every day we have something going on uh, you know and uh, you know so we just want to help this uh, network. Uh, be the best it, it can be. So we're we're sort of, I guess, so we're the we're the uh, the starters of this um, <laughs> of this of this thing. So uh, now, don't distract me. Now, look, I don't know. So black man must have went and did some research and just uh, pulled up that uh, pulled up that picture. That picture was actually from five years ago. I actually did a, a, a one when I turned uh, fifty four last year. Um, I did a comparison. So at fifty and fifty four, and so far I'm still hang, hanging on to my gains. I don't expect to make giant leaps in 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 my fitness at this point i'm just trying to hang on to what i have so i, I posted a picture of myself at age 50 and then at age 50 uh, 54 and uh you know you really can't tell the difference between the two so that's that's the goal but yes i took that i got that shirt specifically when i turned 50 and uh you know i saw the shirt and i loved it so i said like, you know i gotta i gotta i gotta get this guy so, so on that on my very birthday is when i put that shirt on uh, uh for the first time so yeah but you know the fitness journey has certainly been one that's been long um, but it's also at the same time, it's been re- uh, rewarding at the same time. So again, he, so BMU did, definitely did some work to try to find that picture, uh, mm-hmm. uh of, of me. Uh, that's the that. problem but, when you're, you're the host of, of the channel has your personal <laughs> Facebook. He, yeah. he, I bet you he creeps on us all the time. I'm sure. Oh yeah. Yeah. He, he's that. That's why yeah, you gotta be careful what you post out there. <laughs> don't, I they always not. say don't, don't post anything. You would be embarrassed uh, that if you, if you need to go back and look at your uh, pictures as if something needs to be taken down, you better take it down before BMU uh, gets a hold of it because it could very well <laughs> wind up making it on the, on the show. So you better uh, be careful about uh, uh, what's out there. If you're friends with him, uh, he can, he, he's definitely, you could be a lurker back there. But uh, but yeah, that that was um, that was definitely something um, you know um, that was that was that was a good time and uh, yeah, in my life that to, to get to age fifty. I mean, we take for granted how you know precious life is. Sometimes we don't realize that you know it could go at any moment. I've lost guys under fifty. I've lost guys in their fit since they've turned fifty. So you know, again, every day is a blessing, and you need to be able to uh, you know treat every day uh, uh, seriously and take your fitness uh, uh, seriously as well. So. But again, so that's going to be again the general topic uh, for uh, uh, for the show. I think last week's show, I, I really um, the last couple of shows we did were really good. Again, it was a call-in show again, but we had an impromptu show on kissing, 
and again, the 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 statistics uh, definitely uh, surprise me in terms of how a good portion of the world doesn't kiss, especially the Africans. Again, I don't know what's going on with the African people. I don't kiss, but but uh, you know that that that's definitely something that um, you know uh, certainly surprised uh, surprised me. And then we had so really it was it all stemmed from last last Fridays um, the Friday before last barbershop. Then it kind of spilled over into our show, and then we actually talked about it on uh on tuesday night it was part of the tuesday night uh discussion about kissing and it's just amazing how just in recent years how people's views on kissing have changed uh at least in this country anyway where people are you know kissing less because of different factors or or you know practices of people or whatnot and people are starting to look at it as, as an unsanitary practice these days because of where uh, people's mouths seem to be moving these days, but you know, I, I think it's still an essential part of of, uh, of life, and I just couldn't imagine being in a in a healthy uh, marriage with my wife without kissing her. So, so you know, look, we're we're, we're you know we're definitely um we're definitely locked in there. But that was a fun show, and and uh, certainly getting. No, I did enjoy it. I also enjoyed that much art show we did the last two last two weeks. We did yeah, one well, that one, yeah. But we've been we've been we've been we, we we may have to move on that show. I know we have a schedule of shows coming up. We may have to move on that sooner than later because every time if if we even touch it, even on your hangout show last night, we were talking about kung martial arts movies, but the conversation, the gravity kept pulling us towards martial arts. So I had to keep pulling back. Say, look, save save some of that content. Uh, because we're definitely going to have to get some guys on the show who are again practitioners in that. I really would like to, you know, have a panel. I know I, I got Mandrell. Uh, he's out there uh, again celebrating his married life. As as we were saying just before the show started, that earthquake, those earthquakes that we had in the Northeast, uh, we have a, we pinpointed it was a Mandrell <laughs> doing his thing who caused those earthquakes to come out. So uh, you know, so but uh, you know, we're so happy for him and and um, the things that he's doing. And, and so we're really, uh, you know, happy for him and, uh, you know, hope to have him on the show. But again, anybody who has has practiced, like I said, I haven't practiced. I am a, an, a, a I'm an appreciator of the of the discipline and the sport of martial arts, but I've never given serious study. I have a little background in boxing, but I really haven't, you know, gone hard into uh, any of these disciplines. So again, we're looking for guys. If you have a background in that, I know Black David uh, studied the martial arts for many years. But anybody who has a practice in that, or even if you've boxed, like amateur, I know JT was an amateur boxer. For, uh, you know, he he boxed when he was in the military. So, so guys, anybody, if you've been in a combat sport or the martial arts field, you you practice for uh, a, a number of years. Uh, we would love to have a show where we bring some of these guys back, so we can talk about some of the deeper concepts of martial arts the training the conditioning that you go through the spiritual aspects of martial arts uh we want to be able to explore that in a deeper uh, fashion have a deeper conversation so anybody who has that background we definitely want to uh have that have a, a panel of people and i can like say i can because i haven't studied i can be more the, so the host moderator for that show because i know grooming you have your experiences in it so i would you know love to hear more your perspectives on that so yeah i can be the i can be the moderator and let you guys cook and and we can be oh that's to gonna be that. you know what i have i have plans for that you know i i always have a plan absolutely I always have a plan. you like so, you like hannibal from uh the a-team <laughs> i always have a plan what's the plan hannibal? i just don't i just i don't smoke anymore i can't do the whole cigar thing or a cigarette <laughs> thing like, like what's the plan hannibal? i love when a plan comes together <laughs> absolutely absolutely so yeah. but uh, again good to have you guys here tonight stacy b79 always and always supporting us always in the house good to have you here uh tonight. Yeah, is it, it is the unofficial unofficial cheerleader of the channels that's right that's right so it's always good to have you in the presence too and, and i'm sure more people will be dropping in as as we uh, as, as we go through the show but uh but yeah but let's talk about this thing let's talk about fitness yeah uh, from a cultural perspective so again so for you growing up for that time in Greece or what you know of Greek culture, what is for the average Greek person, you know, we certainly get into our personal uh, testimonies uh, concerning fitness, but what do you think is the mindset, the average mindset of the typical Greek person, male or female, when it comes to fitness, uh, uh, activity, gyms, you know, what's the gym culture or, phys or the, uh, the, the technical term is the physical culture. Yeah. Um, you know, the physical culture in Greece, uh, compared to say the United States or whatever, from 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 your 
uh, uh, background. Um, mm-hmm. And and again, I want to I also want to specify to you know maybe a little bit different than because I know sports is po- pretty popular all over the world. Football, soccer, you know, soccer, soccer is a is huge. Pretty popular over there. Exactly, exactly. So not necessarily sport. talking about uh, sports participation per se, which obviously requires a certain level of fitness. Uh, but obviously, not everyone plays a sport. And so mm-hmm. you're talking about your your everyday person, young people. You know, uh, you know, what's the general view towards fitness uh, uh, in Greece from your perspective? And so, from Greek Americans being here as well. So my fitness thing was mostly for my godfather, believe it or not. Mm-hmm. My godfather, he's up there in age right now. He's hitting 81, 82. And right. he's still shredded. I mean, sh- by shredded, I don't see, you know, he th- doesn't have a lot of fat. I mean, like, he can do a muscle. You can see six-pack, then on yards. To this day, he won't wow. stop training. Um, he fell in with, I, th- I believe he fell, not believe I know so. He will never admit this to me personally, but he fell in love with the Mostar, uh, Mostar, excuse me, the fitness world um, through his military career. Mm-hmm. Uh, background on him a little bit. He was um, drafted in, in, the, in the Navy, like most people do in Greece. He liked it so much, he stayed in. Um, so he became a four-star general. Four his star. job, wow. yeah. His job was he was the head of accounting of the Greek uh, Navy, mm. so he knew about every penny going in that place. Like mm-hmm. you couldn't pass a penny. Unfortunately, he got blackmailed. When you're up there in rank, you get blackmailed a lot. Mm-hmm. They accuse him of stealing. Um, so he went on a down di- spiral and literally tried to commit suicide in all nine yards. Oh wow! What saved his life was fitness. So he trained and trains and trains. Like I'm, I'm gonna be on the phone, like pretend I'm on the phone with him. Like yeah, I'm on the phone. Like all right, you know, like no, no, we call Godfather no in Greek. And right. I'm like, no, no, what the hell are you chewing? And I go, he goes to me, kai flower. Why are you chewing kai flower? Healthy snack. Mm-hmm. Seriously? He goes, yep. And he he will go. He's extreme with his diet. Mm-hmm. He has a personal trainer, dietitian, and a coach. I'm like, do you think it's overkill? He goes, nope. I go. You know better. I went to him, and I never understood that when I was younger. He used to really get on me by my weight when I was younger. Like, when you go to tighten up, you're getting fat. With this, that, that. And I'm like, all right, dude, look, relax. It's not a big deal. Back, I now I understand why it's a big deal. Mm-hmm. Like now I'm trying to shred this. Mm-hmm. I get it. Mm-hmm. Like, like at the moment, like I'm like 23 pounds down, and that mm-hmm. took a lot of work. It is not Were overnight. you ever shredded? Like I know you played football back in high school and whatnot. Like when would you say was your like your your best look? Yeah, obviously you studied martial arts for a number of years. When would you say you were like, you know, like your most shredded or cut or developed muscular? I was never or... shredded, and mm-hmm. that's the goal at this time to get shredded. Mm-hmm. Um, so for everybody who doesn't know my little a little background on me now, um currently right now. I'm in a fi- fitness journey. Like, you know that. I, I, mm-hmm. Didn't I tell you that about right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I have I hire a coach. Um, don't need a personal trainer or dietitian because I work I work in dietary, so that, that's kind of pointless. Have a di- you know, dietitian help me out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so I have a coach instead. It works a little better for me, my schedule and what my techniques and everything. So with me, it was always very hard to it was easy to get the weight off. Mm-hmm. That was not a problem. It's getting to down to the point i'm shredded i never got mm. to the point right the, the fat fi- loss because a, yes. a lot of people confuse and this is always something i'm always um uh, preaching as well a lot of people talk about weight loss but really it's about body composition mostly fat loss i think that's what most people want um and and sometimes it doesn't even involve losing weight at all like i, I used to tell women all the time like look if if i can get you into a dress that you're looking for but you weigh the same would you care and most of them will say, no, I just want to get into the dress. So it's not even about weight loss, but it's about the mm-hmm. composition of your body. You want more muscle than fat. Right. You want to be able to, you know, lose the fat, especially in the places where, you know, around the midsection or, or what have you. So, you know, so it's definitely uh, I've always, you know, tried to you know, temper people's um, expectations. I go, oh, I need to lose 20 pounds. I'm like, well, 20 pounds of what? Because you definitely don't want to lose 20 pounds of muscle. Absolutely, but under no Correct. circumstance do you want to lose muscle. But and 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 it also uh, manifests itself in some of the routines that people do because a lot of the routines that you're doing, you're actually going to be burning more muscle than fat. And so you know, people also need to, to be educated on what they're doing 
and you know what 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 are the best things to burn fat and what are the best things to uh, keep and preserve and possibly build muscle so so i, I didn't mean to interrupt but you, you no, no 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 you're good, good, good. Like, yeah. that's actually great because that's where i was going with it next actually because i don't care what the scale says i don't give a shit yeah. about it right i'm right. honest with you i care yeah. about how i look and how i feel that's what mm -hmm. comes down to it mm -hmm. and lately i am feeling actually really fucking good i'm always tired and that's be beyond it because i think as an adult man we mm -hmm. never get enough rest or sleep to be honest with you no, we're on, we're no. on go 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 especially, especially on the weekends for me i, I realize i probably get less rest overall because again even during the week yeah i mean i'm not as fit i'm not getting uh maybe as much sleep but i'm also less active because it's like it's to the office and back uh for the most part so but on the weekends you're doing so much that you know the sleep that you are getting it uh, doesn't seem adequate and again there's no such thing as catching up when you sleep also so so mm -hmm. I, I, I i there's some work that i need to do uh to make sure that i uh you know get the proper rest that i need but weekends are not restful uh no. a lot of times i'm busier it's most people like me personally uh, weekends i usually every other weekend i work this is my weekend work now mm. the other weekend that i'm off i usually pick up an extra shift anyway so that's there are 11 shift, 11 hours right there on top of whatever else I do, Sunday I get up early to go to church. By the time I get home and do whatever I need to get done, it's like half a day shot already. And like when you get yeah, rest, exactly. And like then I do my show, do the show with us, and that's it. Then oh, day's gone. And like when do you rest? Wednesdays I'm off. It's get up in the morning, feed the mom, feed the dog, take her to chemo, take her to the doctors, then the other doctors, then the other doctor, and the other doctor, and the other doctor. Oh, mm -hmm. and go to a store and like. Okay, when am I is when time for Pete to get a little R and R. Exactly. It's not. Yeah. And that's what frustrates me right now because I like playing video games to relax me. I don't have the time. I'm mm -hmm. gonna need to make time. Mm -hmm. Now that I'm adjusting my contact schedule, I still hoping more time. Right. And before we get on too off on topic, like Lydia, like I was saying, I feel really good how I what I'm doing in the gym because weight has gone up extremely a lot for me. So that is a plus. Like my PR before was like um with a on a bar of chest was probably like it was like 35 both sides so 105 yeah i first time i did 245 plates 135 yeah yeah and i struggled i'm not gonna lie to you i struggled and the mm. last time i'm like i'm like come on motherfucker get you're going up i'm mm. like but i got it up I'm right like, okay i like this leg press 125 pounds mm -hmm. that's not bad actually yeah that's actually pretty good yeah. The weight is going up every week. Right, right. So the program Nick has me on, it's unorthodox for me personally. Mm -hmm. Because I always believed in um, little meals through the day. That's what I was trained with. Mm -hmm. Him having me fasting for 16 hours is like. Yeah. that's. I, that's, that's I don't know about this dude. I'm like, go, Trust me. You're going to like it. I can't fast every day because of work. But I do usually 10 hours. But days like today, uh, like I could do 16 hours because I got I get off early enough to start my fast earlier. I'm actually feeling good. So I'm a believer in a way now. Yeah. But again, it comes down to the whole training in Greece. For years and years, it was no real training in Greece. No right. So training. was there like a preponderance of gyms, gymnasium, you know, for, for you know, weights, I mean, or treadmill? Like what was the just growing up was it was it something and I, and I can imagine like like if you were in like an athens or something mm -hmm. like that i could certainly see uh you know uh more having more access to gyms there but i'm just saying like in your neighborhood or even in your house that was it common for people to have like a little weight set little little bench with uh some 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 uh, weights plastic plates or whatever i mean was was Believe that, that some yes. dumbbells or something yeah Little weights, like I remember somebody buying me dumbbells as a kid. They're not mm -hmm. real; they're fake. The little Sam dumbbell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like for pretend I'm working out and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And like I was a little mm -hmm. kid, it fascinated me mm -hmm. at, at that young age. Mm -hmm. I remember, not even a block away was the uh, gym in the area, and that's the only gym in the area. It was mm -hmm. two stores I remember very well, but fitness, the gym store, the gym, and the gym store. Mm -hmm. And I remember people talking about protein powder. Mm -hmm. People thought protein powder was drugs. I'm like, mm. yeah, only if I can I talk to you guys now. It's not drugs. I remember right. the old people like going, my, 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 my talking to my grandma. Like, can't believe my son brought this home. I, his father's gonna kill him. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, you know, like, like, you go, my grandma is like, his brother, like, he goes, oh, that's a new drug they're on, right? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, they're going on. Like, I wish I was like a little 
go back in time. I'm like, that's not a drug, ladies. <laughs> that's right. good for you, actually. Well, anything new, you know, people going to, you know. And back in the day, there were a lot of supplements, um, especially when you had, like, the magazines. Did you guys have access to, like, like Flex Magazine or Muscle and Fitness, the Weeder? The weeder publications from uh from from back in the day, like you go into the, the store, the magazine stand, did it have you know bodybuilding? Because I'm because I've been a a, fi- a fan of bodybuilding most of my life, and I don't recall any like major bodybuilders, famous ones like you know your Arnold Schwarzeneggers, Franco mm-hmm. Colombo, all like all those guys. I don't recall a lot of bodybuilders coming out of Greece that I knew who were of Greek or- origin, but. Um, but certainly, um, but back then, did you see Arnold Schwarzenegger on the cover of a magazine in the stores or, or whatever? What was the, you know, was that accepted or did, did, did the Greek people look at the bodybuilders and be like, Ooh, those guys look, you know, they look ugly or freaky or something like so, that. What, what was the general perception? Here's where it gets a little twisted in my opinion with a gray area comes in literally. Okay. So we have the statues there in Greece. They're all ripped. Right, They're right. Throwing this, that, this, and that. I'm like, and they had the helmets, you know, coming with the spears or the swords. You know, I'm like, I should get my helmet now. I'm actually thinking about it. Mm. But it, it just, you had that go up. Now, let's talk about Arnold for a minute. Arnold was very popular in Greece. Even Stallone. Mm-hmm. You know, very popular actors. Mm-hmm. Like, if you're talking about an action movie, those those two names are always going to come up back in mm-hmm. the '90s in Greece. You right. cannot bring up an action action conversation, action movie conversation. I bring in Stallone and Arnold. Mm-hmm. Those two are the number one names you're going to bring up. Right now, bodybuilding as a whole, back when I grew up in Greece, it wasn't a thing. I didn't know anything yeah. about it. Yeah, maybe I was too young at the time. Mm-hmm. Last time I went to Greece and when I was into the fitness, people didn't really talk about it either about mm-hmm. Mr. Olympia and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Now that I watch the Greek TV, you have people actually Bibles education, educating people out there. Right. What is creatine? What is a multivitamin? Mm-hmm. Why do we use fish oil and so mm-hmm. on? Yeah. Because now gyms are actually blowing up in Greece too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. You, it, boom. We just figured it out. You know, like if you go to the gym and move your muscles, you might prevent diabetes before you hit 30. And that's yeah. very common in Greek yeah. culture. Diabetes right. and heart problems are two major problems. And I'm shit out of fucking luck because both my parents have them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I have to watch that. Yeah, because they say some of that can be hereditary. You can pass it. It is on. hereditary in my family. Yeah. 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 yeah almost I mean, like half my family have both of them. Gotcha. Like my, wow. my uncle died from a heart attack. Mm. So cancer, my other uncle died from cancer, lung cancer. Yeah. But yeah. again, in his in his dumbass defense, he was a painter in New York City, smoker, no, not wearing a mask. So, you know, damn if you do, damn if you do kind of process with him. Right, right. Shout out to the panel coming in. Alexis from Texas, thank you for coming in. Yes, howdy from Texas, even though you're originally from KC. But, uh, you know, she's she's planted her star in, in, in Texas. In a... Um, can you can you do me a favor? I'm I'm I I hate when uh when I, when I I can't pronounce names properly. I really do. Um, if you could in the chat, if you could phonetically spell your name, like how it's supposed to be, how it's supposed to be pronounced, so I don't I don't mess that up. But again, I really appreciate you supporting and and, and coming in. But I really want to make sure you get your name right. That's that's a little a bit of a peeve of mine. I always try to learn, no matter what the language is or whatever, how complicated the 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 name. I have a lot of Indian friends who have very long names, and I pride myself on being able to pronounce the name like all the way through without you know shortening it or, or whatever. So if you could do that uh, for me, in a, I, I would really appreciate it because uh, again, I just want to. Or the next time we have a live show, we would love it if you would call in. And you can tell me personally what your what your name is. So you know, definitely uh, you know, uh, by the end of the month, uh, you know, certainly feel free to call in as well. But okay, so it's it's Ine. Now that's Nia. I'm telling if I'm looking at it right, knee like in like didn't like your like your knee. So it's um, Ine Nia. If that's if that's if I said that correctly, then you could just put <laughs> okay. Ine Nia. All right. All right. So I'll, I'll know that. Uh, I'll know that going forward. Thank you for uh, thank you for sharing that. So so uh, good to have you on uh, uh, tonight as well. But um, but yeah, but back to your point about the 
Um, again, not being big back in the day, like, you know, and, but the, the nice thing now you do have the explosion of the gyms and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Uh, now what about with women? Um, because again, you know, a lot of times you talk about bodybuilding for the most part. I mean, obviously you have went girls into, you know, fitness and whatnot. What is generally for women in Greece? Is that, uh, do you see more women or, you know, as many women in Greece, going to the gym and you know not, and not just going to the gym because you go to the gym you know being on a treadmill or whatever but you know lifting weights or or what have you and, and with the women you have so many different divisions you have bikini you have figure you have you know um wellness and bodybuilding and all that Do, uh, are women uh also taking that on um uh as far as the um you know the fitness uh, uh culture it's starting to, but there's only one little difference in Greece right now. It, it was now the toxic is creeping into that to culture too. Mm -hmm. So for the longest time, Greek women are very reservative. They cover up. They don't like, you know, showing too much skin with at the gym kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, I literally just had this conversation two, three days with um, Stacy actually. So we, we are always complaining about, you know, guys hitting girls on the gym, but when you're when you're in tight shorts to the point like I can see your ass, you kind of ask for trouble, right? That's what we were talking about. Mm -hmm. So in in Greece there were less of that. Now slowly that's creeping in too, and like, and that's also getting a little trading dangerous waters. Now with the gym thing, most people did not go to the gym for the, when mm -hmm. I was growing up. The gym was your backyard. Go run for a run. Go to a park. That was a gym. Play soccer. And that was at gym. I think that's why you back when I was growing up, you saw a lot of people obese. Mm -hmm. not, you know, obese, even fat. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of it. Yeah. Because gym wasn't a thing. I remember men wearing tight shirts all the time. Like, that was the thing back there in Greece. Wear tight shirts. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're wearing tight shirt, but you're... Your gut it was showing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's that ultimate no no. You know, it's like you know uh, I'm talking about Jack. Yes, I do. Oh my gosh. And that was not a great look, to be honest mm. with you. Mm. Wow. So wow. gyms are becoming more popular. Right. But it's now. interesting you say that about the conservative nature of mm -hmm. I always fought, felt that Greek people were um less conservative. Uh, in terms of clothing and whatnot, like women, uh, uh, you know, wearing more, you know, especially at the beaches and whatnot, you know, uh, wearing bikinis or what. I always just had this idea in my mind that that uh, Greek people were generally more body positive uh, about their bodies more so than being conservative and covering it up. But that might be a perception. I might only have been looking at a couple of beach scenes or uh, uh, something like that. that but I always just thought that people were. Say. You know, Let me hmm. unbunk that a little bit. So. Hmm. You're right and wrong at the same time. So yes, okay. You you are you are right. They are right reserver if usually they don't show. You know they're actually right by proud. They show skin and everything like that, but they know how to do it in a way is classy still. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So at the gym, yeah, they were in a bikini. There were you know guys that were you know you know like weren't taking your shirt off you know and f f go outside and playing with your kid and well, water blue flying. It's normal. It's not a big mm -hmm. deal. Mm -hmm. Here is like, oh my god, you took your shirt off, you're fat. Okay, you're, you're, I'm fucking fat. You can turn around, asshole. As simple as that. Right. Um, right. I was saying, like being positive, positive, yeah. positive in in that, not not so much concerned about looking yeah. buffed, but it doesn't matter like what your body type is. You're just free, comfortable with your body. So again, you can be at the beach, you can be whatever, and you can have, like I said, a guy can have his shirt off, he can have the beer gut or whatever, but it, it doesn't affect them because you know in Greece they're not as concerned about uh, how you look. Uh, or again, more body positive in terms of, hey, this is who I am, or whatever, accepted, or or, or what have you. Whereas here, yeah. you have like, you know, people can be very self conscious about what they wear, you know, how they how they look in public and things like that and whatnot. So again, some people won't be as brazen to 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 be so open with, you know, how they dress. Although again, in certain some circles, like people will be like, what is she wearing, <laughs> or what is he wearing? So. You know, we've certainly seen enough uh, content in these spaces talking about, um, you know, uh, dressing inappropriately in, in, in Walmart or, or whatever. We've all seen those videos. And, and, and I put a good, uh, here, good example. That. Like, I will say a woman would never wear a pair of pajama pants, for example, go to the gym and work out. That is mm -hmm. not a thing. And I said, I mentioned this before. 
Mm-hmm. Don't go to the store or go anywhere with pajama pants. Mm-hmm. Like, they, yeah, they have the little uh, tank tops, you know, go to the gym. Okay, okay yeah. so they'll show their belly buttons and whatnot. Yeah. 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 Did, 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 were you, well, you weren't there in the 80s. Remember the 80s? They had that, like, the Jane Fonda look where they were kind of in these, um, I, I forget, the leotards with the, with the, the socks on and stuff like that and going to the gym and, and all that. Was there a craze where Greeks uh, or Greek women ever went through that phase where they were in that, that kind of fitness thing. So they were wearing the headbands, they had the leotards on, they had the, you know, uh, uh, you know, very fitted clothing and spandex and whatnot going to the gym. Was that, was that, was that ever a thing at some uh, point? No, actually like that. I, I, mm. at least I don't remember that thing. God. Right. Uh, no offense. Uh, but, you would have loved it. Admit it. You would have loved that. Spandex. I don't know. If, I don't know about spandex. If, it, and it, if, if, if the girl is hot, you would. You. Would. Yeah, <laughs> that may distract you from your workout, but I'm just saying. But you know, again, it, I'm not saying that looks on everybody, but typically the woman who would be bold enough to do that, you know, she's definitely not afraid of showing her body off. So she'd be in the gym, you know, wearing that stuff. But at least that again, that was like an '80s and '90s thing where every, you know the ladies would wear that kind of stuff to the gym. But they wear the really tight, short, short kind of things with a. The mm-hmm. cheeks were kind of slightly hanging out or whatever. And, and uh, you know, so so definitely there was, you know, there, there's, you know, a lot of gyms didn't necessarily enforce, so to speak, gym etiquette when it came to clothing and whatnot. The girls almost like they could almost wear anything to the gym. Guys was like, yeah, don't take your shirt off or whatever. But the ladies, you could have essentially like a bikini top on and, and you know, kind of still be still be uh, accepted. Yes, the leg warmers back in the day. So the 80s leotard. With the okay, leg I know what you're talking about now. Yeah, yeah. I remember Jane Fonda. Oh, like. Uh, leaving it in judge that, that let's get physical. I will tell you video. one thing. Yeah, Greece never went through that phase. <laughs> like the late never went through that no, phase. they that never. I don't know why me. they kind of skipped that phase. That is really um, surprising to me. Yeah, they I, went I just, into yeah. the leather pants more than anything. Oh, so, okay. So the tight leather pants, but not yeah. the the spandex but leotards. And... Here's the problem with the leather pants. Mm-hmm. They didn't want to for females. They went for men too. It was both ways. I'm like. <laughs> I'm like, but man, they wore them leather, like tight. And like, I had mm. a pair of leather pants. It was mm. Like, you know, I remember that. Like, it was the coolest thing ever. You, do, like, you just put, you just put that an image in my mind. I don't know if I want to see that. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to see. I don't want to see that. <laughs> but I want to answer one of our comics from uh, Marcus um, over here on my side. Mm. Um, he, he says, I think uh, people will get hit on uh, either way. Um, yeah, he's right. Um, I do agree with that, dude. Like, yeah, it's you're gonna get hit no matter what. Obviously. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But. There, um, Joe Swirl, he's one of them. I, I feel be guy, he he calls people out in the videos and like that. Mm-hmm. And he has proven like most more people who show more skin or more, uh, more skin, let me rephrase that, more scampier clothes, mm-hmm. um, to the gym are more likely to get head on mm-hmm. if they don't want to. Mm-hmm. So, people who wear like more like a t shirt versus, versus a tank top. Mm-hmm. You see where I'm going with this, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like I said, but I mean, it's going to be especially if, like, you know, the ones who are serious about working out and the ones who don't, and mm-hmm. the ones who are serious about working out, they're probably the results are going to show them what they're wearing. So, like, I've seen people wear like the baggy sweatpants and the baggy shirt, male and female, to the gym and whatnot, but they're putting it in. So, you know, it's there. Uh, but, you know, they just don't necessarily want to show it off, you know, but it's hard to hide certain things where you're in a squat rack or, you know, you're doing those bent over uh, <laughs> rows or whatever. You're gonna see. You're gonna see. You know. You're gonna see what you're gonna uh, uh, see there. So, but uh, but yeah. I mean, certainly, you know, dressing in a way that doesn't you know uh, draw unnecessary attention to yourself. You know, a lot of that stuff is is certainly going to matter. But uh, but so so we see this culture growing in Greece. It might be maybe a little few a few years behind here because I can tell you certainly growing up in the '80s. Again, I think pumping iron, for example, had I think a big influence on the fitness culture in the in, in society. Pump and Iron, it was actually covered the 1975 Mr. Olympia contest. The movie came out in 1977. And since that came out, you know, uh, and then uh, in the early years, you know, Conan the Barbarian came out 1980, uh, uh, 1982 and whatnot. And The Incredible Hulk, remember like, you know, 1977, The Incredible Hulk TV series with Lou Ferrigno. And that, that was a huge well. hate in Greece too because that, and yeah. I used to watch so, it in so, Greece. Right. Yeah, like, so I know, think you had, yeah. Is so you definitely had this craze that came out during that time. Yeah, yeah, that we had that same craze. Like the first known documented uh, gym was called the gymnasium back in uh, you know ancient Greece. That's right. That's right. That's what we get. The, that's where we get the term from. Gym yeah. coming from gymnasium. Yeah. The seven um, 
seven or fifth generation uh, century. I can't remember. I almost said generation, mm -hmm. but yeah. you know what I meant. Um, yeah. I just that's what sur surprised me because we do have a lot of sports in Greece. Right. Soccer is mostly what we, you know what we're known for, but mm -hmm. we got a basketball team. Mm -hmm. We yep. have a very, and a very good polo. One. Yeah. yeah. Polo team. Yeah. We have a swim team. Um, we have a rugby team, believe it or not. We have mm -hmm. literally everything. Mm -hmm. And they're actually really fucking good, believe it or not. Yeah. They're not as popular on TV, but they're really good. So you right. makes you wonder, how do these guys get fit all the time? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's kind of ironic. You're talking about, you know, how when you were there growing up, there wasn't a lot of gyms. There wasn't a lot of people who were really into fitness. But Greece is the home to so many of what we know today in terms of fitness. I mean, it's the, the start of the original Olympic Games, you know, or at least the modern games anyway. I think it was Greece 18, what was it, 1804, I think was the um, the, the first modern Olympics. But we go you know, going even back before then, the ancient games in Greece, wrestling and, and all mm -hmm. those early events, the races and whatnot. A lot of that stuff came out of Greece. So Greece has a history of sports, of competition, of, you know, fitness like i said the term gymnasium comes from those places where those athlete trains where those wrestlers uh uh trained in order for these competitions uh, uh back in the day and i think the first modern olympics was in greece uh, i want to say it was 1804 i could be wrong about that um it might have been a little bit earlier but the you know so again you come from a culture that has that but in maybe in recent times maybe through maybe 20 years ago maybe the average Greek person wasn't like, you know, trying to be a, 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 a fitness person. And what's also ironic is you also mentioned this at the beginning of the show, all of those statues. So again, those Greek statues of the, of the gods and, and the, 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 the athletes and whatnot, everybody was ripped, had ripped abs and, mm -hmm. you know, just very much, uh, you know, the, uh, these, um, uh, these, these figures uh, uh, are portrayed in the artwork uh, uh, as being very muscular and very fit, uh, uh, individuals, but, uh, somehow, you know, for a time, some of that got lost maybe in the modern, just the, the modern world that we're in, uh, that that got lost, uh, for some time, but it seems like it's starting to make a comeback, uh, um, in, in Greek culture. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Uh, so really fast before I want to lose my train of thought Nin mm -hmm. in 1980. 1986 was the first Summer Olympics of the modern era was held in Greece, and the president who ran them was Dimitri Vikolos. Mm -hmm. um, does not sound Greek, actually. I'll give you that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but he um, he ran the first modern uh, Olympics uh, Greeks. It was in Athens, believe it or not. And the second one, obviously, we know, was in the early 2000s. Uh, 2000 mm -hmm. I thought it was 2004. 2004. It was in Athens, yeah. Because yeah, I remember... Yeah, and actually, a Greek uh, man uh, ran. Uh, he won the hundred meter uh, 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 run sprint uh, from Greece, and that was like a big upset because you know you had all the, you know the usually it's like it's the Americans or the Canadians or the Jamaicans mm -hmm. or something like that. So he kind of came out of nowhere; no one knew who he was, but he won the uh, actually I think it might have been the two hundred meter race uh, that he won uh, at the at that uh, two thousand four uh, Athens Games. Uh, so, so yeah, so you, you seem to come from a culture that was bait, built on, you know, you had the soldiers, you, so you had the, the Sparta uh, warriors, and you had the Olympics, you had the statues. So, so how people kind of got away from that for a while uh, is, is, is certainly something that, um, you know, is, is, is interesting. But like I said, I'm glad to hear it coming back. But just going back think, to what I was saying, yeah. I think if I had to say why Greeks stop, you know, being as fit, if you want to call it that, mm -hmm. it's work. They're workaholics, most of them, that, mm -hmm. that I know, at least. Mm -hmm. So, I'm afraid that workaholics back then, when I grew up, now it's a little different time set and mindset. Right. And that's a, for a different episode. But for what I can say, for at least for now, is they were workaholics. So, they won't put they put the house in, in a back burner. Like, not a lot of people had a world off a job. A lot of them work construction. A lot of them mm -hmm. work in restaurants. Mm -hmm. A lot of them would do, like, garbage man job or... You know, stuff like that, mechanics, you don't have a lot, you know, sitting behind desk jobs. Yeah. And like even here, they're not that many desk jobs, believe it or not. Most of them are like blue collar like myself and yourself. It's like most of the people are going to be having like a hand job kind of job. Mm -hmm. Do you disagree or agree? Um, but I think the numbers have certainly dropped. I mean, especially when you look at towns like you know, uh, industrial towns like Pittsburgh or, you know, Ohio, where, you know, we had steel mills and plants. 
I know Pittsburgh, for example, that's essentially become a tech city. So definitely a lot more office work, uh, people sitting down. I think in general, I think most people are on sort of sit down uh, uh, sort of jobs. A lot of the jobs that people used to do manual labor either got replaced by computers or technology like the auto industry, for example, when they went to robotics. So I think that took a lot of people out of the actual working conditions. Uh, I think farming, you know, when you had uh, more advanced, you know, uh, equipment, uh, you know, and harvesting or whatnot, the, you know, essentially match machination uh, has certainly replaced a lot of um, uh, physical labor. I think a lot more people are working at least in some sort of office environment, even if you're in an environment like Amazon or something like that, like in a warehouse, yeah. it's still not the same as like being outside and toiling and doing a lot of uh, a lot of physical work. So, so I, I think it's kind of like a, a, a mixed bag, but certainly for the people who are in the offices, I think, you know, certainly I think a lot of those folks are at a disadvantage is because again, you forget how those physically demanding jobs. I think that's how a lot of people used to say thinner. I mean, we, there's been trends in obesity over the years. And I think a lot of that tends to happen when people get out of manual work, even our mothers back in the day who were housewives, they got up from like sun up, they cleaned the house. I mean, they didn't have, automated devices they didn't have washing machines like they washed by hand the washboard they hung the clothing on the dr on the hanger in the in the now i got a feeling in angles is that's kind of how much you guys do you do laundry you hang the do you hang the clothes to dry like on the clothing uh lines so and... that is a catch-22 also question because mm -hmm. my grandmother we didn't never had a washer in the house mm -hmm. she did it in a sink mm -hmm. yeah yeah no washboard either just right barehanded Mm -hmm. And she had a hanger outside in the backyard and hanged it yeah. up. Yeah. Or in the winter, she wanted to have one in the house. I remember going like you know going through the clothes, right, get, right. get around. Right. And yeah. That's how I was. My yeah. mother, you know, when she when we we lived to Greece, she goes, "Fuck this!" She goes, "I'm not a fucking washer." She okay. Was so so she, used to it. She brought the automation in. Yeah, but the dryer. She didn't care about a dryer. She mm -hmm. didn't give a shit about a dryer. Right. She just hanged it up outside. I'm like, uh, fresh air, dry it off. Right. Now, let me ask an old school kind of question here. And then again, folks in the chat, I don't know if if you remember, if you grew up, what did you prefer? To have your clothes hang on a dryer out, I mean, put in a dryer or hanging on a clothesline outside with the clothes pins and whatnot. Did you have a preference in terms of how your clothes smelt after that or or whatever? I'm I'm just I'm just curious to the people uh you know uh who who may have experienced that this for millennials you may have no idea what I'm talking about or or younger but for those of you if you remember having your clothes hanging outside on a clothes uh line was that better than the dryer when it came to the to uh, to your uh, clothing I I just be curious that's just a that's just a side note that uh I'm I'm just curious about but I want to get back to again the explosion of fitness here so yeah, in the eighties, you had gyms like Bally's. Bally's Fitness was a major one. Plus, you oh, also God, had that. major spokespeople like Rachel McClish, who was a uh, you know uh, the first uh, female Miss Olympia. And again, that was back then when the the women looked like you know like girls on a beach, like they weren't muscular. Uh, as they became in in later runs, became more uh, manly looking. But you know, you had major spokesmodels uh, for that. Again, you had the Jane Fonda craze. And it's like anyone who was any, anything, uh, uh, back then you had a fitness, uh, video, Jane Kennedy, she had a fitness workout tape and whatnot. So there definitely the eighties was this explosion of, uh, the, 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 the gyms. I mean, you had women's only gyms li living well lady, uh, was a popular franchise. Uh, uh, that was certainly in the Northeast. That was a women's only gym. And again, just the whole explosion of home video, Richards and Richard Simmons in in the eighties and whatnot. And 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 uh, uh, um, there was a movie that came out. I don't know if you remember. Um, uh, oh, geez, what's her name? Um, oh my gosh, I forgot her. Uh, uh, the lady who was in um, who was in the the Halloween movies. Uh, the, the the actress in the Halloween movies. Oh shit! I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. But she was, got, movie, she was in this movie. She was in this movie called Perfect with John Travolta, and that was like a big movie back then. When she was, uh, you know, uh, when she was a Jane, it was a Jane, some Jamie Lee Curtis, Jamie Lee Curtis, yeah. So you know, so you had a lot of the the actresses at that time. They were kind of going into it uh, uh, as well. You had the Buns of Steel franchise that came out in the eighties. Uh, uh, you know, so again, working out from home. 
uh, uh, became a, a big thing. I mean, and you know, you always have stuff like if you go back to like to the fifties, you had like Jack Lalane. He had a like a, a a daily fitness show that was on. But I'm talking about the real explosion in fitness really came in the eighties, where gyms were going. Gold's Gym really went national. Uh, World's Gym, L.A. Fit, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, here, you know, you you really had an explosion in that time where you know uh, everybody was looking to get fit uh, 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 during that time. So it was definitely a, a um, you know, a definitely change here in the 80s. But I think what we did in the 80s, I think, is what Greece is going through right now. Mm -hmm. It is, I think, uh, because they're going through their fitness phase because they don't understand. Like, I remember watching, I was having coffee downstairs uh, with my mother. And if all of a sudden this bodybuilder comes out, I'm like, oh, this guy's fucking huge. I'm shocked because I didn't expect that from a Greek guy. Mm hmm. So when he comes in, start talking, you start talking, explaining about, like I said earlier, creatine and um, supplements and all this stuff. Some are really good, some are really bad for you. You know, steroids. You know, yada yada. And we go, oh, oh, mm. wow. Like when I met one of my really good friends, Dimitri. Um, he, he, um, he was always in fitness, mm. but he felt like I did. Like I can't get to that goal. And he hired his own coach, whatever. To me, it was more a shocker because I seen Greek people in the gym with me. Mm. I was always being the unique one. And I talked about this. I was always yeah. the, the dark uh, black wolf, black sheep, black whatever mm. you want to call me. Mm. I was always like that. Now, in the gym even made it worse for me because, like, people used to go out, you know, watch soccer. I was going to the gym instead. Mm. Like, that was my poison. You know, or a cup of tea, whatever you want to call it. But I worked out versus seeing me on a TV. You see where I'm going with this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was never really into sports when I was younger as much. Mm -hmm. As much as it sounds surprisingly. I didn't get into sports when I was in my teens. Mm -hmm. And I only was very selective. Like, I was into martial arts, obviously. Hockey and football. And that's it. Soccer, I could play it. I love playing right, it. Right. But ask me to watch it. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's the most boring fucking thing ever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now, yeah. I can't say that as much because I realized it wasn't the, the sport. It was boring. Mm. It was the announcer in Greece. And I'm like, hey, I'm like, okay, what? I'm like, mm. you know, in, in America, in America, I'm like, yeah, this guy's good. He's passing on. You know, he just is. I'm like, I'm like, oh, okay, this makes it more interesting. You know? Okay. So the so the Greek announcers, they're a little, what, too fast or they're, they're just kind of like uh... flat and boring. Wow. I hear you. Yeah, they don't I hear talk you. about anything like he passes all, he's going three yards, four yards. I'm like, and that's all that. And like, they're just talking about who has the ball now. I'm like, mm -hmm. that's boring to me yeah i heard it <laughs> shout out to uh folks who joins information man again thank you so much for joining us tonight again anytime any platform you're on um you know certainly it's always uh good for you to stop by and, and honor us with your presence here so i salute you for being here the wife school podcast thank you for coming through and she mentions feta <laughs> so i guess from the, I, I guess from the tuesday show uh they were talking about your uh the feta from Greece versus the feta from here. I, I, don't, I don't know what the... Uh... You know, I need to start jumping down into Tuesday shows or at least uh, pop my head, you know, through the chat or something because you guys be talking about me too much, I see. <laughs> I don't... That came up. Nah, just brother said he wasn't in the feta, you know what I mean? Oh, that was Friday, dude. Oh, that was Friday? Okay, that yeah, was, that was Tuesday. Freaking, okay, okay, okay. Uncle Friday, Ricky. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I wonder yeah. if he's related to Uncle Howdy. Oh, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> you know who Uncle Howdy is? I bet you you're wrong. You think I'm talking about somebody else. Howdy, how, what? From who's, wrestling. Who's... From Bray Howdy? Wyatt. Yeah, he had uh, his. Uh, oh, so... okay, okay, I got you. I, I knew you. You thought I was thinking about something else. I got, you. <laughs> oh, I, got you. I got you there. Oh, you talking about this? Uh, oh, the sports announcer. Feta, feta. I guess there's a there's a sports announcer. I, I guess there's a Greek sports announcer. I I, I got to look that up. You're gonna have to give me a reference of uh, wife school so we can uh, probably. Yeah, talk I got to do my homework. Yeah, like, like, you know, you married. I talk, I got, yeah, I got to talk on that subject more. But but yeah. just kind of going back, I want to go back a little bit, and then I want to go into like a different. Um, Before we go too far, I also want to mention one thing. My mom's best friend's daughter, uh -huh. she was into really big in fitness, like mm -hmm. to the point, like they didn't question things when a coach gave you something. Here, take this, for example. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she was taking it. She was like literally one step away to get into the Olympics. She was mm -hmm. uh, in martial arts. Uh, Taekwondo, go, I believe. I can't pronounce that mm -hmm. word. Taekwondo. Um, yeah. Thank you. Um, and she failed her piss test. I'm like, why oh, am I failing my piss test? 
and find out she, her coach was giving her steroids the whole time. Mm-hmm. And now she had kidney problems because of that, because it wasn't regulated like a doctor. Right. So that's another thing. Like, you know, Greeks was like, if your coach says take it, you take it. You listen to your coach. Right. And that's sometimes you got to question things. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Um, want to go back a little bit to, like I said, before we hit the gyms or whatnot, were you a fit kid in terms of like, did you do like push ups and sit ups? Uh, 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 growing up, was that something that you know you just kind of got up in the morning and did 30 or 50 or 100 or you know, whatever you did, or a certain amount of that uh, type of stuff, like you know, body weight exercise? Because that, that's something that you know, a lot of people, you know, because they get in their minds, it's like, oh, well, you know, I got to go to a gym or I got to be in the right environment or whatnot, and sometimes, and again. It's ideally, you know, certainly if you can get to something like that, fine. But I just think there's a lot of times there's so many workouts, especially when we were locked down for for two years Mm -hmm. where you couldn't get to a gym. And I know one of the things I used to do was I used to, you know, create videos to say to show people, look, you know, yeah, you can't get get to a gym, but there's certain things you could do from home. Yeah, you may not be able to have, you know, access to dumbbells, but you can like take a like a shopping bag and put like canned goods in there and make weights out of out of uh uh, things and whatnot. So, you know, how how serious were you like back in the day before you got access to gyms and whatnot? Were you about body weight exercise and and just different um, modes that were available to you if if you didn't have access to the gymnasiums and things? Uh, that so we had access I to didn't really have access to anything back then because I was like home and that's in Greece. Um, I started getting access to stuff when I was coming here, when I was living in the States, going to the gym, cry class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get the idea. Mm. Um, in Greece or at home, not going to a gym, not going to martial art class, none of that stuff. Mm. You got a better chance seeing capture the friendly ghost before you see me do a push up in our house. Really? Yeah. And like I always said, I'm going to do some push ups. I, I started really hard, like a couple of days here and there. Then I was dropped off, and like in a couple weeks later, I do some more. I'm like, mm-hmm. the house is never a place for me to say I'm going to get fit. Mm-hmm. It was never my place. Right. Even when I practice my martial arts stuff i always went to the dojo early enough to do it at there right yeah i hear you, I hear you. yeah me i i think um i gotta credit my brother um because he was a he was a you know a pretty big basketball player especially in high school and back mm-hmm. then there was also a a culture of where uh for any sport with it maybe with the exception of football uh you didn't lift weights like the, the the mantra was, you know, for basketball, you don't lift weights because it throws your shot off. Uh, okay. It was just an old school mentality back in the day that they didn't want you. Um, they didn't want you doing that. Only football was the only sport that I know of where they said, OK, you got to lift weights. We're not even for wrestling. Uh, you didn't lift weights um, uh, for wrestling because they felt it made you uh, too slow. But he got me into push ups relatively early on and he would do push ups every morning or whatnot in preparation for basketball. But, you know, certainly he kind of got me on that. So that was something that. Now, I've gone through seasons with it, but that's something that I definitely maintained for you know a, a number of years. Uh, that um, until I got you know really serious about the gym, I put my gym with. So I don't do as much of it, but like on any given day, I can just knock out fifty push-ups if I want to. If I if I really built up my conditioning for it, I could probably get to 60, 70, 80, maybe a hundred. But you know, and I'm talking about doing them consecutively without you know without stopping. Uh, but you know, that was something that. Um, no, for 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 me, my my brother, he really got me on that uh, that that program. Now, ironically, now I'm the fit guy. Like he kind of at some point in time, he kind of lost all interest in sports or basketball and all that kind of stuff. So he kind of got you know he kind of got out of shape over that. But I'm the one who kind of you know uh, maintained it. But he was the one who really kind of introduced me early on to you know that kind of physical training. Um, but definitely the the push ups and the sit ups that was like you know a couple hundred you know you would do and 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 uh, that was just something that was in me for a while. I was still thin. And that might have been the reason why I could do as many as I was able to do because I was so thin. But uh, that was definitely something that he um, that he uh, uh, you know introduced me to. But um, but see, I yeah. didn't feel a love with how can I put this? Um, with weightlifting, mm-hmm. who I was more than an adult. I always always like want to do that. Like I was curious, like, how do you get the body of a Greek god or a body of a Superman or a any of those guys, and I never mm-hmm. could have put the formula together. I thought, you know, dieting. That's why I thought I hate dieting because I love food too much. Okay, you know this and that. I was always trying this, you know, this all these experiments with this stuff. Right. But when I started working for a gym, and I was the just a manager there, and I was the, the head instructor of the martial arts studio, one of my studio. Mm-hmm. 
And one guy goes, Oh, you should go in there. I'm like, eh. Yeah, whatever. I don't care. And I'm like, right. I still can kick your ass. And I'm like, right. So they go to me, you know what? My guy, my guy like, you should go, you know, we should train it together. Like, all right, fuck it, whatever. And if you leave me alone, I'll train. Mm-hmm. That's it. It bit me the one time. And I ever since I lost the gym, he was right. always my anchor now. Right. Well, and it's interesting. You, it, it's interesting you bring that up because uh and I kind of alluded to it uh, in my last comment about uh certain sports that didn't um invest in or didn't endorse strength training or weight training. And you talk about your you know, you've had a long martial arts background. Mm-hmm. But having said that, um a lot of martial arts don't necessarily do a lot of strength training. Like I again, push ups and a lot of you know physical conditioning, sit ups and things like that, maybe but I remember uh, that's why you know, Bruce Lee was so revolutionary because he was like the first guy to like really introduce like weight training, like working out with barbells and and, and whatnot. And you know, people, tell, you know, the body that he had. And if you look at, you know, when he did his lat spread and and all those things and, you know, but he was a big believer in strength training. But you still have some old school disciplines that don't endorse it. And the fact that, you know, in, in some martial arts, uh, you, they didn't incorporate a lot of, you know, weightlifting or, or strength con- and conditioning programs into the martial arts. So what do, what do you think about that from your experience back in the day to where you are now? Like, you know, if you were going to say start up a class again now, would you be more intentional about getting your students to actually lift weights or maybe having, if you had, let's say if you had a dojo, say if I just snap my fingers, you got a dojo. Okay. So this is your, your place. Would you have a, an area with some, with a weight set or a universal machine or, you know, one of those multifunctions so your students can actually, you know, start to develop themselves physically like that as part of the overall martial arts training. Have your views kind of changed on that a little bit since you said when you used to teach? Uh, I don't know how much did you have your students actually working on their, you know, fitness in that capacity using machines and things of that nature. That's a catch point too. Okay. Because as much as I love fitness and doing going to the gym. Sure. I don't think it's necessary to hit the weight sometimes. I think you can get the same amount of work out of just doing kinesthetics of sometimes. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I know my personal coach now, he tells me, you know, he would have switched it up. Just except doing car of 20, let's do some pull ups, do like two sets of or three sets of eight, for example. Yeah. And that's a better warm up versus going for a bench press because mm-hmm. you're working your whole body. So if I can do a workout, let's say um, squats, for example, that again, it works the whole body. Anything that works the whole body, I'm more a fan of because the whole time you're working some every mm-hmm. muscle. Right. So I don't really feel, feel it. If you want to do an extra yourself, mm-hmm. all means go for it. I'll be mm-hmm. helping. I'll be love to help you as I said, say. Right. But I don't think it's a must. Okay. Okay. And like I said, there's, there's obviously different schools of thought on that. And like I said, Bruce, he was like really big into, you know, that needs to be something that's incorporated into into your training. But I, I'm sure there's going to be different schools of thought on uh, uh, thought on that. And I've always known that martial artists, they did, you know, you guys talked about in the last show, we're talking about, you know, doing the push-ups on the sand or the concrete or whatever, building up your conditioning yeah. and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, so I know, you know, so I, I think certainly calisthenics, the wife school, said you know definitely that i've seen guys in fact there's a guy like when i uh, go to work every morning uh there's a guy who's um as i pass by there's a park to my right and i see a guy there like every morning and he's got the weight vest on and whatnot and he's doing pull-ups and chin-ups and things of that nature you know so yeah definitely a lot of cats you know certainly use the body weight exercise and the calisthenics to certainly get the job done as well so you get, there's a lot of different modes of um uh trading but but uh, but one thing i i, I wanted to kind of Move to as we talk to this area of fitness is that as much as um, and this is almost like a sort of a um, a contradiction to an extent that as much as we talk about the explosion of fitness uh, in the world uh, where we talk about um, where we talk about uh, you know different people's uh, uh, exposure to where we have more gyms that are available now more access also gyms that are are are, are, are less expensive now. Uh, because again, you know, back in the day, you know, I remember my first gym membership, I was paying $75 a month. And that's what, that was what a corporate discount. This was at New York sports club. And it was a kind of a good thing that I did that because what that did for me was, um, 
that uh, let me know that, you know, look, I need to take this seriously because I'm, you know, back then, if I'm spending this kind of money to go to a gym, I'm going to use it. Whereas if I joined like a $10, like Planet Fitness, I don't know if I would have stayed with it because there wouldn't have been, I didn't have like that extra motivation until I got the bug to train like on a regular basis and really stay consistent. Cause I, prior to then I would go off and on. I bought a weight set, you know, yeah, 300 pounds worth of weight and I did all that kind of stuff and I only used it uh, sparingly, but I didn't really stick with it. Uh, so, but when I joined that gym and had to pay that, that, uh, high price to join it, uh, you know, it made me committed until, uh, until the bug came in. So now I look, I can go into an LA fitness and train for 10 bucks a month and I'm still going to treat it just as seriously as I did if I was paying that, that, the, um, the high amount. But the fact that we have all these gyms, uh, that are available, but still the obesity issue, it's still like a climbing issue. So it's like, we're getting fitter. But at the same time, we're getting fatter. Oh, well, I can and, tell you why. Yeah. I know. I've seen the numbers. So in hours late working in healthcare, and you see a lot of numbers that you'd be surprised. Do you know what is the first thing people go for when they come home? When they come home? Yeah. What's the first thing you go for? Like a like a snack or a drink or something to eat. Oh, well, the alcohol, beer, or, or, or soda. Uh, oh, soda. Nah. So average has about 240 calories usually. Mm-hmm. Uh, carbs, I'm not sure off my head, to be honest with you. About 240 calories for one soda is a lot, if you think about yeah. it. Now, mm-hmm. let's say you drink about four or five of those a day. Yeah. You do the math there. Mm-hmm. So you're working all day. All right, Paul? I'm like, you're tired. And I'm like, what's the last thing you could want to do is cook. So on the way home, you, oh, McDonald's right there. Mm-hmm. Burger King. <laughs> Oh, um, uh, talk about mm. no, no. Now with Uber Eats and Grubhub and all that stuff, they made it even easier. Mm-hmm. So now you see all these companies coming out now with um like um Ray Fresh, for example, that sends you all, the, all everything you need, a healthy meal you can cook right there in like under thirty minutes. Great. Or you have these um, not TV dinners actually now they actually have healthy ones. That tell you have like 30 to 40 grams of uh, protein. Uh, I don't know how many carbs and calories, whatever. I'm just doing, throwing examples of they're great, but they're very expensive. Mm. So you're going to go with the old school dinner dinners that are only five dollars a piece. See where I'm going with this now? Mm-hmm. The numbers don't lie. The number the reason obesity is growing is because more people start very good healthy what health, healthy habits. Going to the gym, eating the right stuff and everything. At some point, they hit a curve. Mm-hmm. And that curve is called life. Mm-hmm. But that life means you don't have time to cook. You don't have time to do shit. Mm-hmm. But you eat out all the time. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, there's also a commonality. In fact, I'm going to share something here that I sort of put together for before the show. Uh, let's see if I can get this guy here to show here. So, and I'll, and I'll put, I actually, there's a, this website is pretty cool. Cause again, it, this is a, this is an interactive map that shows, uh, obesity and where they go by obesity, it's like anything like so over, over 18% of the population, they, they use that sort of as, as a guide. So again, the, the countries that are over 18% obesity versus the ones that are under, uh, the, the areas where you see on the map that's gray, that means they haven't collected data in those countries as of yet. But do you have um, Greece on there any chance? Because I don't see uh, it. Yeah. I'm, in fact, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna share. The, I'm gonna share some of the numbers um, uh, in in more detail. But I'm just showing initially just this sort of global map that shows generally. So again, we look at the United States. Uh, you know, very high concentration. Thirty. You know, uh, like thirty uh, uh, six, uh, eight percent uh, obesity issue. Now we're not the we're not the highest. In fact, I'll just go to the next slide. This here is a breakdown of like the most obese nations uh in the world so ironically the uh, folks who are more obese than us is kuwait all right so really? you have kuwait, that. united states saudi arabia jordan now what i am seeing here a little bit is there is a pattern with these countries in that the ones that are here at the top and then i can go just uh, through the list here uh the next one here you have again iraq more or canada is over 30 percent australia is over 30 percent mexico um uh south africa so you have a lot of countries here greece actually is on the next is 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 uh is actually coming up greece you guys are actually pretty good you guys are 33rd 
26.3 percent uh obesity uh prevalence there so you guys are sort of like you know sort of like lower middle there's almost 100 countries that are taken here so you guys are definitely at the bottom of the upper tier uh when it comes to um when it comes to obesity but one thing to keep in mind from seeing from these uh countries here is that a lot of these countries are fairly well off relative to the world i mean we forget sometimes that you know there's a lot of countries in the world where you know people don't eat like on a regular basis, you know, there's starvation, there's, oh, yeah. you know, there's, there's different things that are, that are uh, uh, preventing people from having good nutrition overall or access to it. But if you look at some of these countries where, you know, they have developed cities and nations and such, um, you know, the obesity rates uh, can, you know, really skyrocket because of the access you talk about. So you have access to soda, you know, you have access to a fast food place, a drive through that you would stop through on the way home. And so, again, so to the point of, yeah, like a lot of people are taking their fitness more serious, joining gyms and working out and things like that, still having access to different foods, to different uh, ways of eating are definitely things that uh, that keep people from um, uh, uh, keep people from, um, you know, uh, reaching their fitness goals because you have the access to uh, uh, to it. Now, it's interesting here. I got to go shout out to Black David. Nigeria is actually on the low list. Now, what's also interesting in this uh, slide here, a lot of these countries where they did get data, again, they don't have access to a lot of data from Africa. But the countries that are represented here, so Cameroon, Ghana, Ivory Coast, Nigeria, all relatively low rates of obesity. Now, the thing about here, I don't know how much of that is tied to, again, the general condition of the country. So if you're a third world country, for example, I don't know if the obesity rates are going to be affected just due to the point that a lot of people don't have access to food. Like I said, they don't have access to the conveniences or a lot of how they eat is more kind of hand to mouth. So I'm, I'm not sure. And again, Black Dave, if you want to sort of come up and, and sort of give your commentary on this, because it's interesting about Nigeria, because again, a lot of, at least what I see recently, you know, a lot of the videos in Nigeria, I see some fairly big people, you know, some, some decent size, especially the women, uh, aren't necessarily thin, I, I don't, you know, whatnot. But according to these numbers, uh, generally as a nation, Nigeria is relatively thin, uh, uh, or certainly under the obesity rate as our other African uh, states. But again, I don't know how much of that is tied to, you know, when they put in like famine, um, or you know, or other factors, you know, food scarcity or food deserts where you know people uh, again literally live, um, you know, hand to mouth or you know, scourging for food. But it seems like in the more advanced countries, you have this, um, you have this, uh, um, um, uh, you know, this trend. But again, there's exceptions here. Like this last towards the end, again, 90, there were 97 countries. Vietnam is the leanest. Only 2.6 percent of Vietnamese are overweight. India, which also surprised me because, again, I, I've seen, you know, in terms of a lot of the foods they eat, they eat a lot of carbs. They eat a lot of uh, sugar. And I know diabetes is a big problem over there. But apparently, obesity isn't a major problem. Japan, uh, which kind of makes some sense. I mean, you you know, you don't see too many uh, heavy Japanese people. A lot of the Asian countries uh, uh, here um, uh, tend to be on, a little, little bit on the leaner side. But uh, but yeah, but in the certainly in the West and in the Middle East is where we tend to have a lot of the obesity. Even though in the West we also have access to again a lot more of again the fitness. I don't know if there's how many gyms are in. Uh, India, for example, or Cambodia, or or Vietnam, for you that know, matter. I'll be honest, with Paul. A gym. Yeah, I feel like I'm kind of surprised because they're on the move a lot. Mm. Meaning, like, I know this is gonna be like a little blunt. Um, like they're always, you know, they're gonna walk from one place to the other most of the times. Mm -hmm. you know, like, you know, I know a lot of people. I know a few African guys and told me they didn't have a car back in Africa. Right. So Africa, having a car is like a luxury in there. The from my eyes, again, black guy, please get your ass up here and tell me if I'm wrong. Right. Um, but like you know, there there's certain some of them are certain tribes they mm -hmm. hunt a lot. It's like, oh, obviously, how are you gonna hunt? You're gonna chase mm -hmm. it. You're not gonna go, hey, Daxi, come here, we're hunting. Not, you're not, mm -hmm. None of that stuff. You're right. going to grab and go after the damn thing. You know, you know, you're gonna chase it. Right. But even so, if you look again, if you look at the map, like Africa in general, if you look at the the southern tip, and if you look at the upper tier, like what's common between those two is. They're highly developed. So like South Africa, very highly developed uh, civilization. The Middle East. Now, again, now you have 
it's it's a, these are areas of excess. You know, they got a lot of money, they have a lot of oil, and they're literally building these mega cities out of the desert, uh, so to speak. Um, the interior, where that might be again less access, like you said, less access to resources. Maybe you have to live to you know hunt to eat. Uh, uh, sort of thing or, or, or food it becomes more of a concern we know about there have been famines in Africa and usually a lot of it's in those middle areas a little less so in the Middle East and in the northern and, and, and certainly in the southern uh, uh, area so again it, it's the, the pattern may be just looking at this map is again the more advanced and developed that the nation is the more likely they are to be obese I mean South America again you know they're, they're teetering around you know, Argentina for example teeters around 30 percent obesity uh brazil 28 uh 3.8 um so again i wonder how much of this is simply having too much access to things even though i know brazil has a pretty strong physique culture if you've seen anything about brazil they, oh, yeah, they take one. fitness very seriously you know uh body body composition they, they take very seriously in that country but they're still a little bit on the on the side because again every video i've seen on brazil it's like everybody goes there to eat the food is amazing for what i understand you know, the, the, the local street vendor, he's going to give you some some carne and some rice and some, you know, so you can really, um, you know, eat well uh, and relatively cheap down there. Also, it's not a lot of money for food. So you have um, so. So, again, this could be tied to the development of the nation. Again, there's always going to be uh, outliers like Japan. Uh, but like I said, generally, I haven't seen a lot of Japanese people generally who are um, obese. And then you also have to take into account. The again access to food, especially in America, like you know, first thing that always is always cracks me up anytime I've gone out to dinner with someone from another country, like to an American restaurant for the first time, they're blown away, for example, by the portion sizes. Like you know, when they come out and get your plate down, and they're like, wait, wait, man, this will this will feed my family. <laughs> There's one big plate here, I'll feed my whole family here, and it's like you know, you mean to tell me that this is just one serving? So you know, uh, it could also come down to portion sizes, also why. Um, you know why the obesity uh, numbers are over or, or, or off the charts, but again, the factors I think you talked about, uh, Peter, in regards to again the processed foods, the sugary foods, the sodas, um, you know the, the the fast food. Again, a lot of these conveniences in countries where those things are available uh, can certainly uh, be a contributor to why the um, you know why the obesity rates uh, tend to be up in these countries also. But you, you know, know anything funny? you want to share on what what I've um, what I put yeah, actually, I, I want to touch base with um the last comment that came out from a uh, housewife. Um, the, um, the comment she says, "America want us to feed the pharmacists." That's the part that hit me. Mm. They're right because I tell you, I tell you what, because you to pick up anything in here in the United States, you need a what? What do you mean? If, so if you want to do what in the United States, you you if you need something, medication to say, okay. You oh, you gotta go to the doctor. Yeah. Okay, but then your doctor writes a script or prescription, right. mm -hmm. and then you go to pharmacy. Correct. Right. So in Greece, it works a little different. You need to see a doctor. They need to go to prescription, and but you don't need that script. So if that's your local pharmacist, like you know, all the time, or whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I need this for my diabetes. Okay, you don't need a script. Here you go. That's how simple it is. Mm. Insurance works completely different. I'm not very familiar with insurance. I need to get back on that. Um, okay. You know what? I'd like to get my mom on this one. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'd like to get her ass on the camera one day mm. and have her to be good. hopefully she doesn't throw some um curses on the phone at me. <laughs> right. Like I, before we close out, I gotta tell you the iPhone story that happened lately in here. And you're oh, gonna laugh your ass though. Love the iPhone stories. Anyway, um, so the person like there was a cream called uh Votolin. It finally came on the market in, in the United States recently. Mm. First was with prescription, it was with script. After insurance paid for a hundred and fifty fucking dollars for a cream this little big. But mm. that stuff worked miracles. I used it so much. Mm. It, take out knots and everything like that. Says, now you can now finally you can get it without a prescription. Nice. And it's a decent price. Mm. And it makes me wonder where the hell are we going as a country? Mm. Are we getting better or we're just digging a, a grave? Our debt is going out of control, and I yeah. feel the freaking pharmacies was the tip of it. Think mm -hmm. how many people think, excuse me, how many people need medication and they can't afford it? Right. 
Yeah, I mean that's a certainly that's an economic discussion. You know, maybe that's what we could talk about. I know, in I know, future, I know. In a, in but a future show. I feel yeah. like that fitness has a little bit to do with it too, because if you take care of yourself now, you don't have to worry about those old, old medication later on as much. Right. Except right. when you're at 50, maybe you should be worried about it in your 80s. Mm-hmm. That's one thing about Master Ray, my instructor. He didn't start taking medication to his 70s. Mm. I'm like, what's the trick? Like, simple. I always worked out. And he ate like a king. The portion size and humongous. But he was always very active. Five, six classes a day. Yeah. Pro- plus his private classes on top of that. Yeah. That's all he did. He's trained, 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 trained. I remember. I remember that. Um, remember that swimmer, uh, Michael Phelps. Yes. When he talked about his diet, like he had, like he ate like eleven thousand calories a day, and it was always like pancakes and and you know chocolate covered pancakes mm-hmm. and all these kind of crazy foods. Because again, he he spent so much time in the pool, just burning energy in the pool. That the uh, rock. You know, he needed, That's another yeah, example. He needed, yeah. The rock. He. I'm not sure how many calories he eats, but I seen his me- cheat meal. They're legendary. Yeah, I've seen this. I've seen some of those mm. too. He said it to the legendary, and I can credit the legendary pancake stack this high. I'm yeah. like, just looking at it, I don't get finished th- three. I'll be lucky, but mm. seven or eight of them, Jesus. Yeah. He has like 20 of them. Pizzas? Yeah. He's like five pizzas to himself. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. how? How? Got to feed the engine, you know? But, but again, he's a massive guy. I mean, on, on any level. And the, the crazy thing about The Rock is he's actually gotten bigger and, and more muscular and, and defined over the years. Remember, like, The Rock in the in the 90s and I early 2000s? He didn't have that kind of definition. He wasn't, like, freaky looking. But so he's just gotten freakier with age. He's just gotten bigger and, 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 more, uh, and more ripped. Like I said, he wasn't ripped back in the day. But now, you know, it's like every muscle fiber you can see now. So... I was on another channel, uh, um, the sports bar with um, actual King Smith. He hosted that. Mm-hmm. Um, he has been coming because I'm the, um, the wrestling guy for him. Right, right. And, and we're talking. And one of the questions was, do you think The Rock is on steroids? And my answer was yes, on, immediately. Mm-hmm. So yeah. the, what I want to say on that, because it's part of the fitness thing. He took a high years for a little bit of Rock, if you remember. Like, yes. He went from wrestling to movies that he was really bad at first, if you remember. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To a break. Then he came back with... Um, Gains in pain. I think it was the first one he came back with. Yeah, right. But when he came back, he was a beast of a monster. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, I looked over like, that's the Rock. Yeah, like, and even yeah. in those uh the Fast and Furious uh, franchise, you know, he he's pretty ripped in those. Also, he's pretty big. Yeah, he's just getting bigger and bigger because right now, yeah, the gym. He, he's always a big gym guy. Let's be straight up here. He's always yeah. loved the gym, and now he got to the point like he needs a portable gym. Mm-hmm. Imagine how much money he spent on the period of his gym every time he moves it. Oh, sure. Except it's in some kind of trailer. I'm not sure how that moves that thing. Mm-hmm. Like, if he's listening, at least give me the, the secret of formula. I was shit. That's all I care about. Look, money. I mean, look, I mean, some of these guys, like we all hear, like LeBron James, he pays like a million dollars a year on his fitness. You know what I mean? So for a guy like The Rock, it wouldn't surprise me if he spent that kind of money uh, on whatever he needs to make sure that he has what. Uh, the, the equipment and the training to do what he does because you know he makes tens of millions a year so you know he's very uh, uh financially successful so yeah so that's a that's a very small investment for him to be able to maintain the quality of fitness that he uh that he has so as much as we're talking about fitness let's talk about the um the elephant in the room for a second the scam ones sure because there's so many scam stuff like out there scam like, arsenal okay. yeah. right. oh yeah there are a lot but a lot of scam program that athlete x is one of the good I mean, it's another one that he shows I see these um, advertisements all the time, all over the internet. Oh, mm-hmm. if you want to lose weight, do this. You don't need, you can't eat carbs and lose weight. And yeah, you could eat. It was, there's so many ways to lose it. And I'm like, looking at it, I'm like, it never ends. The scams. What's your opinion on those? Um, yeah, be able, I guess a little bit more specific um, regarding. So you're talking about guys who have like, um, uh, I guess uh, gurus who talk about weight loss programs or yeah. fitness programs or whatever. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, you're going to have, I mean, there's, there's, you always going to have like the bro science uh, uh, guys out there um, or the guys who talk about their programs, but they don't give you like the real in terms of whether or not they're taking, you know, whether they're taking the supplement, uh, uh, taking the supplement route or not. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I, I certainly think, you know, there's, there's almost, this, this is a common thing that, 
Um, in fact, I was just talking to my daughters about it before we uh, I got on the show. Uh, talking about this, I almost think that we live in an age now where there's there's too much information, uh, or too much access to information, or too much too many people uh, thinking that they're contributors uh, uh, to information. When um, you know, and I and I think it I think it kind of hurts the. Um, um, trying to remove from the state. Okay, I'm trying to remove that. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, that everyone's a, everyone's an expert on everything, right? It's like everyone's a journalist. Everyone is a a, a preacher or a religious person. Mm-hmm. Uh, everyone is a is a is a scientist. Um, or or everyone has you know uh, certainly in the fitness industry, everyone is an expert uh, on on fitness. Now again, I'm not saying that you know we should be elevating like athlete X or these other guys to the to that level. I mean you know. I mean, looking at the guy, he's constantly ripped to the max. I don't know what he's on, you know, if he's on anything. I mean, I don't, I don't know if he shared his uh, protocol, but for a guy to be that lean and to maintain that all year round, um, you know, I would be certainly uh, skeptical of 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 what, you know, what he's uh, doing to maintain that kind of uh, uh, look. But, you know, everybody um, uh, comes in with different, you know, special diets. I don't care if it's keto, carnivore, you know, plant-based, vegan, vegetarian, or whatever. Everyone has a, you know, uh, has a view on things, and, and and really, it comes down to you know an individual having to take some agency over what works for you. You know, so so my only thing is in terms of the scammers. One, I mean, don't take anything that's unauthorized. Um, uh, you know, or put anything into your body that you don't know about. If, if a guy comes to you and say, "Hey, here, take this," and you just take it blindly, I think you need to do some agency and do some research before you put anything into your body. Uh, number one and but uh, again i think you have to you know you have to uh, ultimately be the one in charge of you know even if you're working with a trainer uh you have to take some agency hey, look this is feeling good and this isn't and not necessarily always going with you know because the guy looks a certain way again you don't know what those people are doing to look a certain ways but you know we're all going to say well that guy's credible because he's got yeah he's ripped and he's got six pack but we don't know the protocol that he's on so I think, and you know, this is certainly another subject that certainly Mandrell, you know, when he, when he, again, when he gets back from making his nest, that he could certainly talk about also. We've kind of touched down on some of the shows that he, that he's done, um, that we don't know, um, you know, how these people are, are, you know, what they're giving people. But even when it comes to training, you know, different training protocols. Now, again, I, again, I made the mistake uh, early on. Again, my first bodybuilding experience or training experience was I got the Arnold, Schwarzenegger Encyclopedia of Bodybuilding. That was like the first, you know, major. Yeah, it was one of the first books I got too. Books that I got, and I did the program almost to like to a T, and I couldn't walk like for two days. I mean, it, it was the too much volume for my body type. Now I'm a natural ectomorph. I'm a naturally thin mm-hmm. person. Again, when I graduated college, at six foot three, I was 147 pounds. So I wasn't a. I wasn't a a. Um, I wasn't a you know a big guy at all, but I'm doing all this crazy volume that Arnold was recommending in his book. When for my body type, I learned later on that for me, less is more. Less workouts in more infrequent workouts. I got it, you know, recovery is <clears throat> it's something hang on. <coughs> it's something that I gotta pay attention to. You know what I mean? Uh, might have been speaking too much this weekend, but but yeah, I know, so I got you have... excited about damn. I don't think I get that excited. <laughs> Shit. Uh, some got caught in my throat. Yeah, there, maybe but, uh, uh, you know, me losing some weight making you look excited there. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, again, somebody uh, Dino Dinosaur again. Thank you for stopping by. He says Athlon X has one cheat meal dessert uh, per year on his birthday. He takes his diet. Uh, he takes his diet takes super discipline. Yeah, I mean, if if you're gonna do that, you know. Uh, you know, no, certainly, but again, can everyone follow that? You know, it, it's, no. it's, uh, you know, that, that's, that's, you know, that, that's the thing, you know, so it, it, again, you know, I, and I, I've, I've watched several of his content and, you know, I like it, you know, the way he, uh, without the, uh, says things, but again, to get to his level of conditioning or, or, or discipline. And again, we don't know, and I'm not accusing him or anyone of anything um in, in terms of you know what they're doing in order to maintain the other one uh, that what i was doing, looking but... for just now um is v-shape 
of Lee Shatter. Um, he's been called out so many times. I don't know how many people mm -hmm. who are actually in the field. Nobody that I know personally, but I've been hearing him get called out by IFAB guys. Um, even Anna called him out like, you're a scammer. All this stuff because mm. the way he says, "Oh, you can eat carbs as many carbs as you want, eat whatever you want." He's no, you don't. We, we don't restrict in my program. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, but if you don't restrict yourself a little bit, you go crazy. You're never going to. If you don't go to a calorie defense, you're not losing weight mm -hmm. or losing fat. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it doesn't make sense the way he says it. Well, I so, think he might have been well, at least the conversation I that I've seen over the years. There's, there's a group of people who basically uh, talk about a calorie is a calorie. Or a lot of guys say, well, if it fits your macros. So the idea is it doesn't matter what you eat as long as you eat a certain amount of calories. Like, say, if, let's, let's say if, you're, if your goal is weight loss, uh, for example, mm -hmm. um, as long as you eat under, let's say if your calorie max is, say, 2,000 calories a day, as long as you're eating under that, you'll lose weight. It doesn't regardless of what it is. So a lot of those guys, they don't make any distinction between protein, fats, or carbs. And as long as you're doing that, you know, eating under your limit, you'll, you'll lose weight. But like I always said, like it always always gets down to what type of weight are we talking about? Are we going to be losing muscle? Are we going to? Hey, Mandrell is in the house, man. Good to see you, brother. Uh, wow, you know. we were just speaking about you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you know, so you have a lot of you know um, uh, guys who are proponents of that. So yeah, you can eat whatever you want, eat junk food or whatever, as long as you eat under under two thousand calories or whatever. You're still in, you know you'll still make gains. And you'll still you know get shredded uh, by doing that. Again, <clears throat> I think a person at the end of the day, again, they need to take some agency over, um, over you know, uh, you know what they're doing uh, regarding uh, training. See, and one thing about this fasting car, uh, fa I minute mean, fasting, I do like about it mm -hmm. because you have only this much window to eat. Right. There's no way in hell you're going to. Well, see, that's the thing. So th the question I've always had about intermittent fasting is: mm -hmm. Is it the fasting, or is it the caloric intake? Because generally, when you restrict yourself to that window of eating, are you over the course of the day, are you going to be consuming more or less calories than you normally would if you were just eating sort of throughout the day? So, again, having a limited window in which with which to eat at the end of the day, are you cutting your calories down? So to me, that's the and that's sort of like the back and forth. That's the debate on those who are big proponents of intermittent fasting and and, and those who are not. And again, I'm not you know, I'm kind of neutral. Um you know, one way that I kind of do it on a regular basis anyway, I do a minimum of 12. So, my, you know, like I said, I typically don't have breakfast really or my first meal. I don't even call it breakfast anymore. Usually I have my first meal about 1 p.m. And my last meal is usually midnight the night before. And now if I'm working from home, sometimes my first meal is not until 2 or 3 p.m., depending on how busy I am. And then I eat within that window until midnight and then, that, you know, and, and then repeat. So, so myself, I do like a minimum of usually on average a minimum of 12. But you know, for people who want to go extended, eat in a 16, eight window or longer, 18, six window, or whatever, you know, what, how many meals, let's say, let's say if you gave yourself a six hour window, how many meals are you going to possibly eat within that six hour window? Two. You know what I mean? So, right. honest with you. so two meals within a six hour window mm -hmm. versus if you didn't have the window at all, you might eat three or four. And that's also oh, including snacks that. and yeah. everything else that you may be, you know, uh, putting in the drinks and, and all that kind of stuff in the meantime. So, so that's that's my only question for those who are, who are part of like the intermittent fasting crowd that at the end of the day is it simply a, a form of caloric restriction more so than everything they talk about. OK, well, your body somehow recharges itself and uh, your system is now primed to like taking, uh, um, uh, um, you know, calories in a certain way or things go to muscle or, or, or what have you. So so it gets, you know, so it, that, that that gets that gets tricky for me. Uh, but again, that's a that's a show in and of itself. I mean, so we're talking about so, the fitness. I don't really get too much going, deep yeah, in that yeah, one, but one thing yeah. I do understand when you're supposed to do this um, fasting thing, it kind of reboot your metabolism a little bit, mm -hmm. and it kind of starts speeding up a little more because you have that window. Right. Don't know. I don't know. This is what I was told. I don't have any facts, uh, right. like scientific facts to so, say. You know what? I can argue with you, Paul. That you're wrong. This is why. Yeah. No, I don't. This is what I want to be. I mean, information I was told by people. Mm -hmm. And one thing I will add to your previous comment: too much information it is a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Me personally, I like researching things, and you know me personally, Paul, mm -hmm. and I do. From you guys, on, I research things to the shit can come fall off a goddamn stick. Yeah. 
But the problem is with fitness, like, I don't know what where to start, where to end. There's so much out there with fitness mm-hmm. stuff. Because yeah. it, we're, it is as humans, we're obsessed with our fitness. Let's be honest yeah. here. I don't care well, if some, it, some some are. I mean, what, just throw a number out there. You talk about humans or it's a, what percentage would you say of people who really take their their health and fitness seriously? I think it's less than ten percent, to be honest with you. It's three percent. Okay, three percent. So yeah, so but you're not the, talking the about the other ninety eight percent or whatever is wants that body, but they don't want it. People or but they don't have the research. discipline, or they're not. Yeah, they're not willing exactly. to sacrifice in order exactly. to get it. Yeah, they're not as fact. Like I hear all. I hear so many chefs I'm like, man, I wish I was your shape. Like, really? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you're in good, good shape. I'm like, oh, I'm decent shape. And he goes, like, but man, and, like, and he, he, this is a big guy I'm talking about. Like, he's got his bigger than Santa Claus. Mm-hmm. And the only thing he's missing is the white beard. No pun right. intended. Right. Um, but he, you know, it goes to me like, why don't you just cut back? The one chef, I will say, Trevor, Trevor, uh, Chef Trev, if you're out there, holler at you, my man. He mm-hmm. is six foot, a bull brother like you, obviously, and shred it to the T. Shred it to the T. Yeah. And I, I was busting something. And we used to argue, me and him, when we first met. And he goes, You know what's the difference about me and you? I'm like, What? I want to tell him, like, this. He starts playing, I'm like, oh, Man, you know what's the difference about me and you? I got white, Greek, shiny ass. Kiss it. I went to him. And he goes, I have no comment in that. But the point I'm trying to get to, He's mm. the only chef I ever met. He was shredded. Yeah. But he didn't eat through day. He tasted stuff because that's our job. Right. But he didn't have meals. Right. And he has a gym like him at uh, home like you do. Mm. It just, it's something yeah. Happens. Yeah. So the, 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 does does he, within a window, does he do the fasting thing? Does he, is he? He did um, the, he used to do the fasting thing before the fasting was a fasting thing. Right. Gotcha. It was back yeah. in like, oh, uh, shit, uh, like almost eight years ago I met him. Anymore. Mm. more yeah. like that's he told me like i don't eat because i'm always coffee that's my my fuel through the day i drink coffee okay yeah i caffeine yeah like yeah some people but no, live coffee on, is also some people live on stimulants you know that, that yeah. that's yeah that i never I, I i guess i never tried to get too much on like I'll, i may have like one little like one cup of coffee a week but i'll have like a yeah i'll have like a coke zero or something like that also i mean i, I i'll drink the, the zero the uh the zero sugar product but i i don't you know uh we're not I, friends yeah. anymore BMU, Black Devil, I need a new co-host, please. No, you're not. You're not getting rid of me. No, you're not. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> no, no, I, I definitely that's everything. Like I know people who love tea. I mm-hmm. like tea, but I'm not like I have tea once, twice a year, tops. I'm not a big yeah, fan of yeah, it. Yeah, I'm not into the, the green teas and the and the, you know, again, wintertime, you know, if I especially if I feel a little tickle in my throat or something like that, you know, drinking something hot, a hot beverage, so that with some ginger or whatever, I'll, I'll you know, I'll certainly entertain that. But yeah, I'm not a I'm not a tea like you know, guys at work, they get like the, the real tea and they get the ball, the ball with the chain on it, and they put the tea leaves in there and they soak it out. So some guys are like very old school like that, uh, when it when it comes to that as well. But but it's definitely a um, you know, yeah, I'm I'm not a I'm not a big uh tea uh, uh, tea person either. But um but yeah, but as but yeah, as far as the number of people just globally, I think, who are really like I don't, I don't know if there's like necessarily a culture on earth that I can say is like really dedicated to fitness. Even the Brazilians who are like all about body, but in but there they do like the surgeries, the the BBLs, they do the you know all kinds of things to um you know to 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 make their bodies look good. But again, how many people are going to be serious about you know how many people join the gym, you know how many people stay in the gym, and how many people really use the gym. Here's the my numbers thing get that. smaller and smaller yeah, with each uh, with, with each group. So a g- couple stories here, actually. One, I remember uh, my buddy Jay, Jay Hallerai, if you're uh, listening, um, he had a gym, local gym around here. Nothing big, mm-hmm. a very small gym, more mm-hmm. like a personal studio thing, but you could go work out by yourself, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, was, what was it? The Wii? Yeah, the Wii Fitness almost killed his business. Because everyone mm-hmm. was getting, I'm going to get fitness in this way, but no, mm-hmm. it doesn't work like that. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Now the newest trend was P90X P90X for a while. Insanity, that. all that stuff. I did that, yeah. P90X. And I thought I thought I'd get it for like what was it, like ten dollars a month. I'll get it, just to have it as a backup. Maybe mm-hmm. the days I can't go to the gym, I can do a little cardio. Mm-hmm. But the problem is you cannot stream it on your smart TV. You can only do it on your phone for some reason. Mm-hmm. Right. So oh, wow. just, in, in, just FYI for you guys who have that company, Beast Party, you need to work on it. Mm-hmm. Um, 
so now with the whole plastic surgery thing, here's my thing with that. My ex was talking about it, talking about it, talking about it. And I looked at her. I go, listen, if you want to get us fine, but that's not my cup of tea. And like, What kind I, of plastic surgery are we talking about? Chest, boobs, ass. Okay, she wanted so a whole so, new body. Oh, oh, wow. she, I want a new body. Barbie makeover. Wow. Yeah. She literally said, I want a new body. I want a new body, a new body. That's all she used to talk about. I go, mm. who the fuck is going to pay for it? You? I'm like, what are they? A goddamn fucking ATM? Anyway, um, and I told her, uh, yeah, you know, see how how brazen that sounds. <laughs> who's gonna who's gonna pay for my new body? <laughs> it's gonna be you. Yeah. <laughs> she was now. How long like, did you stay with her? Three and a half years. That? You stayed for still for three and a half years. Yeah, I never cool. thought she was serious. The only one I think she did was her teeth because her teeth were a lot jacked up, and she oh, went back. Her country DR was a little cheaper than here, but mm. I warned her. Don't do it. Don't go there. Just pay the extra money here. Guess mm. what happened? A month after she came back, her mouth was infected. Oh, jeez. So, guess I was yeah. the one that had to laugh. Mm. The same. But my thing was, I was told her over and over was, yeah, I wasn't into that. Mm. You know, I don't like fakeness. Before we move on, I want to shout out to uh, Marcus again. Um, He said he was in, in the Marines and uh, stuff like that. Marcus, if you want to come up and, you know, Maybe we'll interview or have a show with you about your experience in Marines. I think me and Paul would love that. What do you think, Paul? Absolutely. Yeah. Let me know. You are you are one of my prescribers. Hit me up. Uh, my emails are on all of my stuff in the bottom. Let me know how you feel if you feel comfortable. That is, it's no pressure. If you don't, it's just up to you, of course. I hear. You, I hear. You. I got one more question. Again, we could probably use this as a <clears throat> as a closeout topic for the uh, for the show. Because we've been talking about, it, and this is something that has um, I, I brought up in other conversations, but the topic of the show tonight was fitness. But how do you define fitness? A couple ways. One, um, how you feel. That's one. How is your health? Two, and how comfortable do you feel in your own body? The one, the third one is a hard one for me. I feel mm -hmm. fine overall. I don't have any heart problems. I don't have any. The worst thing I ever had was kidney stones and mm -hmm. eight point five million stones in you and trying to piss those out. It's not coming out. Mm -hmm. um, that was the worst thing that happened. But I knew at some point I was going to get them because my mom had them. So mm -hmm. and she had them and had them and had them and like I knew that was coming. Right. So except that, I think I'm pretty healthy. Check weight is going down. I'm, I'm like not bad. Like you should never see me then and now. I'm like I, I'm getting, excuse me, thinner and thinner and thinner as time comes on. Mm -hmm. Keep pushing, Don't stop. Mm -hmm. Your enemy is yourself. Look in the mirror. See that person breathing down your neck. He's gonna stop you going to the gym. Mm -hmm. I hate. I, and I'm. I was the biggest person like that. I was a big gym rat at one time. Then I fell off it because my mom made that mm -hmm. very clear. It's not her fault. It's my fault. I should find time to go to the gym and take care of her. Mm -hmm. But I focus on her. To get back into it was very hard. So when I got back into it finally, I was trying to find every excuse possible not to go to the gym. Right. Not anymore. Now, on uh, I I go, this is how I break my workouts out now. So, you, you know, I go Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays. I try to go Wednesdays, but it doesn't work out with all her doctors. So I go Thursdays, Fridays, and after Friday, I shower really fast and jump on with, in the barbershop. Mm -hmm. So see how I have my routine broken out. It works for me. I'm not going to change it. I'm happy with right. it. All right. You got to like to also know from the um yeah. would also like to know from the panel uh, from the chat also if you have a definition yeah, of what is fitness. I have my own um but I'd be certainly um interested in hearing people's perspectives if you was going to define fitness. How would you define that? Um because I think that's certainly a a gray area uh so to speak that uh, we don't talk about a lot. And um so so just to just to reiterate uh, what you've said about it. So it, it's three things for you. So you said one, yep. how do you feel? Okay. Secondly is a, uh, I'm sorry. The second one was fitness, um, weight, no, like, weight. Okay. Yes. So what your, what your weight is. And then the last one was about how comfortable are you in your body? Body. Okay. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I would define it a bit differently. One of the things that I'll, that I'm always hearing, uh, people use interchangeably is health and fitness. And I think those are two very different things. Um, what I think the first uh, thing that you described is more so health. And I define health by the standpoint of 
Health is about the absence of disease, illness, or injury, right? The absence of it. It doesn't mean that you're fit, but it means that you don't, you're not sick. You're, you don't have an injury. And again, you're, 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 you don't have a disease. You don't have cancer. You don't have, you know, uh, a certain ailments there. Fitness I've always defined as the ability to do tasks. And so if I, if I was going to ask a question, like one question I've always, uh, you know, like I, I should have brought that um, <clears throat> slide up. I don't, let me see if I can quickly do this. Cause I know I had this uh, for some time. Let me see if I can pull this guy up into the slides, but fitness is probably the hardest thing to define because it depend is dependent on the task. So for example, what is the, you know, if I was to show you a 300 pound sumo wrestler, and a marathon runner. If I was going to ask you who was fit, what you think most people would say? So if I had a picture of the two side by side, which one would you say, um, or would you uh, most people think is? And so again, a three hundred pound sumo wrestler and a marathon runner. Who would you say, or what do you think a lot of people would say uh, are the um, are the fit ones? Probably be a runner, but I would say personally, as a, f- a sumo, would be more fitness uh, fit. Right. The question that for me, the answer has always been. In fact, let me see if I can load this. If I can, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna show this. Just give me a second to see if I can um, load. If you, if you, if you just want to keep talking, let me see if I can uh, get this yeah, in yeah. here. Because I, I always say the sumo wrestler because I know the that world better than the. And I know they look my man look big guys, but they're actually very fit. Mm-hmm. Right, right. So I mean, so so my my answer would be both of them are fit because again, fitness has to do with your ability to do tasks. So it doesn't Absolutely. matter. So again, the sumo wrestler is going to be fit for his task. In fact, let me see if I can share this now. and get this guy to come up. You're really having hard issues there tonight. Should have came up. Let me try that again. It's a PDF. They just said I should be able to share uh, should be able to uh, share the PDF. Uh, come on in. Black David, uh, if you could help me in the back, if you could see that in the back and see if you could post it, because I thought with this you could show either like a PowerPoint or you should be able to show a PDF. So I'll upload a PDF. I want to see if I can, um, if you can uh, help us load that. Um, let's see what you can do there. But I would say both of them are fit. Even though in our minds we have an idea of what fitness means or represents, the marathon runner obviously is going to, you know, be able to do his thing. If the sumo wrestler tried to do what the marathoner did, he would lose. I mean, he would barely, you know, do a mile, let alone a, a marathon. But conversely, if you put the the sumo re- the 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 marathon runner in the ring with the sumo wrestler, he's going to get destroyed like within mm-hmm. seconds. Yeah. So again, so fitness is always about the task that you're doing. So again, I know Dino Dinosaur says good good uh, mobility, uh, healthy inside and out, and no meds on a daily basis. Again, I would define that as as health. And to the point again of the sumo wrestler living for 60, 65 years, I would also attribute that to health. But it doesn't mean that these fit. And conversely, I know a lot of healthy people who are very unfit in that they can barely let that. I remember there's a guy I work with very healthy, uh, but very frail and couldn't do. I remember one time he asked me, he needed a wheelchair for his dad. And I, you know, I brought it to work and he was so weak. That it weighed about 50 pounds. I mean, it was a pretty sturdy, um, a uh, wheelchair. He could barely lift it to put it into his car. I had to literally put it in, in, in the car for him. I don't know how we got it out. So you can be healthy. But if you can't defend yourself, if you can't, you know, uh, 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 if you had to do something explosively in in a moment, I don't know how healthy that is or how 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 fit that is when you can do that. So that's why I always make that distinction between the two. Okay, so if again, if you could 
if you could um if you could uh, um, uh, uh, do tasks that you know whatever you need, whether it be a sprinter or a boxer or a a sumo wrestler or a yoga practitioner. Again, try to get a sumo wrestler to do a split, like you know, like a like a yoga uh, professional or something. Like that. They can't necessarily do it. So, or split so like, for uh, me, like me and, and and Black David used to do in martial arts. Right. Right. So, so again, and, and both of you guys, so I'll just use you two guys. Both of you have long um, uh, 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 practices of martial arts, mm -hmm. but you look very different. So at the height when you guys were in your practice, who I, who I, I could look at him and I could look at you, who would I say is more fit? I don't know if I can answer that question. But the, the bottom line is both of you guys got proficient in your martial art. And so you attained a fitness level within your martial art that allowed you to do things that the ordinary person wouldn't be able to do. Now, your health is obviously a component that if you're unhealthy, that's why I was talking about. We talked about on your um, hangout show. If you're injured, if, if, the, if your coach is stretching you out and you pull a hamstring. Then I don't know how that's going to help you in terms of being able to do to perform in your martial art if you're injured. So, again, that's a health. So, so that's, for me, that's a health concern. So again, absence of injury, sickness, or disease is health. You can have a clean slate of that. That doesn't mean because I'm the healthiest person that I don't have any of those, that I can go into any of these disciplines and be able to perform there. All right. So again, to be fit, that's conditioning, that's practice, that's uh, the discipline to perfect your skills in that particular craft. Okay. Um, and then there's a, another component. There's also body composition, right? How do you want your body uh, 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 to look, right? So again, for a lot of fit people, how many athletes that we've seen? You, you talk about the sumo wrestler, dying, uh, you know, dinosaur that dies early, but how many bodybuilders are dying early? You know, these guys That's get no shredded effect, on yeah. stage, two percent body fat. How many ex athletes that are, uh, uh, that die in their thirties or, or 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 whatnot? And these were some of the quote unquote fittest individuals. But then you also have to ask the question, what price did they pay in order to do that? How many medicines did they have to take? How many drug shots did they have to take uh, uh, to, to, to get to that level of conditioning or fitness or whatever? So I think the two certainly go hand in hand, but I still going to define them differently. And the main difference, the way I'm going to define them is by, again, your ability, whatever you're in. So if you're a boxer, being able to box, if you're a martial artist, if you're a runner, uh, if you're a cricket player or a football player, American or Euro football player, I mean, for those guys to go and do what they do that most people can't do, I think that is fitness. And that fitness is going to look different depending on the individual. Okay. So, so again, if you're you're playing American football, a 330 pound offensive lineman who could run a 40 yard dash in four point uh, under five seconds, that's a fit guy because he has to be that big for his position. But if I'm a wide receiver, or running back or quarterback or any other position, I may mean, look differently from that other person. They're both fit, but they're fit for their tasks. And so for me, fitness is very task specific, more so than how someone looks, or fortunately or unfortunately, even how healthy that person is. Because again, the average lifespan of an NFL player is about two and a half years. You know, Matt, like four years is the average of an NFL career. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, so I, I think that's an important distinction when we're talking about this idea of fitness, that we don't get into our minds. OK, man, that person really looks fit. I don't know what's going on in the inside, you know, but the, but certainly the health of the individual, I think it's certainly a component, you know, for for your longevity. But in terms of your functional, what good is it to be super healthy? But God forbid, let's say if you're married and you're in a, a burning building and fire, you can't pick up your spouse to take a carry out of the out of the uh, building. Or let's say if, if someone, you know, a colleague of yours and you don't have the physical strength to necessarily pick them up and carry them out of the office. OK, so so again, I think fitness, I think overall as a quality to your life. Over and above your health, that makes the life you live more meaningful, at least in, in, in the way. So that do yeah. I like the coworker or don't I don't not like him? Question. You is. hate the coworker, but you I'm know, you're conscious, there then. But your conscience couldn't live with yourself if you didn't. Conscious. You didn't, <laughs> right. Shit, I need if the you had, if, think about it. If you had to do a fireman's carry, 
of somebody out of your out of your uh, uh out of your office you know right? so again kid you're in the kitchen right kitchen fire alarms go off boop everybody get out uh you know someone gets knocked out or whatever you might have to be the guy to try to to get them out of there but you might not have to be able to pick them up you may have to drag them out or something could you physically be able to do that yes, you know is is I a question that, that a lot of people you know a lot of people can't do if i had to pick yeah. up a 200 pound man over my shoulder so I, I take a lot of solace in being able to do that. Uh, if you know, not that I'm looking to do that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't. I don't put people. I put barbell on my on my back. I don't put people over my back. But again, but if I had to do something like that, you know, certainly having the capacity to to do that is certainly something that that I that I find valuable, especially as you get older. Is, you know, your bone density and uh, uh, things like that. So I think being fit, I think, adds a quality to your life, not necessarily the longevity to your life. And and I think, but both of them, are, I think, are equally as important. Yeah, you're right. Um, I'm trying to share my screen, but it's not working on my end either. I want to show you uh, the last pictures I had of me being in my charge when I was teaching still. So. Mm -hmm. And you see the difference. And I was actually very comfortable back then. Very comfortable. The way I was. Right. I have my little gut still, but nothing like crazy like a now. But uh, this, you know. This is not working right now for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah, yeah. I was trying to load the the, the picture, but basically, like I said it was just a collect a collection of athletes, different people, men and women, different body shapes, different whatever. But the point is, all of them are fit because they're doing something that is required in the task that they're that they're doing. You're not going to put an 180 pound guy on an offensive line or defensive line. You're just not going to do it. These need yeah. to be big, you know, rugged individuals they may have that that beer gut or whatever you know that uh whatever but they use all of it to their advantage and even Absolutely. then they're still quicker than the average person like i said i'm seeing guys i watch the nfl combine every year and it seems like you got these big six five 340 pound linemen running sub five second 40 yard dashes i mean for a human body to move that fast in that length of time is is still mind-boggling to me in terms of, of of what they're able to do with it so so, so I, I just think that it's it's gonna it's gonna vary, um, uh, and like I said, the fittest people that we talk talk about, you know, the bodybuilders, the figure competitors. Again, a lot of these people have short lifestyles because, again, the price that they pay oftentimes to get to that level of shape, you know, is it worth it? I, you know, for I think a lot of us will say no. It is, you know, for, but it was worth it for them. And for whatever goals that they were trying to reach uh, uh, through the, you know, through the practices that they did. So, so again, so that's always just been something that, you know, I don't think I've ever had an opportunity to kind of introduce it in, in these spaces. But since we're talking about the topic of fitness, I wanted to sort of bring that up for a discussion. Um, and again, anyone else, I know, thanks, uh, Dino, for, you know, your thoughts on it. Anybody else, I know, Amanda, I don't know if you're still listening, if you had a, a, a thought on that, if you want to drop in the chat as well. But I just want to, you know, share that and, 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 and Peter, just get, you know, some more of your perspective on uh, uh on that but does, but does that make sense to you though is, is yeah, that yeah it makes a lot of sense because it yeah. depends how you look at it mm -hmm. so it depends how you're raising it too because in my household we never talked about going to the gym or being or you know work out the only thing my dad ever did was a guy that was a little, a little like a elliptical like, like a ski one and he wanted to say i'm gonna lose weight right but he never used it yeah so i didn't have a great role model when it comes to fitness mm -hmm. So the discipline, the fitness part, that's all me. Yeah. And sometimes you have fall, to, yeah. the tree does fall far, far from the tree. Yeah. And, sometimes and I can certainly too. say outside of my brother, like I said, you know, but again, he had a reason to because he played basketball. My dad was not a sportsman whatsoever. And, and I didn't have a lot of relatives in my family who came from athletic background. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so and especially just, again, even, even in my age bracket, you know, that's why I'm also, you know, always promoting you know fitness over 50 that's kind of like one of my hashtags on my um uh, my social media page i mean how many guys are, who are over 50 who are still hitting it you know and, and, and hitting it smartly you know you certainly have to sometimes train change the way you train uh train smarter you know like i said i don't do i, I posted a video um on my ig uh 10 years ago so i'm 44 45 years old i did a 452 452 pound uh deadlift for two reps um, at nice. this age, I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> I already said, if I can't do a minimum of like eight reps of anything, I'm not doing it. 
you know, it, it's, it's it's like the juice is not worth the squeeze. So it's very rarely like you talked about the 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 the, the max you did on your on your um on your bench press to one thirty five that you hit on your bench press or whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't know what my maximum bench is. It might be two seventy five, two eighty three, fifteen. I have no idea, but I don't even profit or, or you know you know in in those in those realms anymore i'm not trying to you know i don't have personal bests uh that i try to uh, uh set if I, I usually do if i can do more than eight reps or something i add 10 percent. i may drop down to five or six and i build it back up to eight these that's on an upper body exercise and See then the lower body it's usually 10 to 15 reps that i'm doing it. if i can't do a minimum of 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 eight like on a squat i generally i stay away from it um but i'm not trying to do two reps and have a spotter and things like that because I don't know what's going to pop at any given time. So, so I try to stay away from those hero lifts, uh, uh, at, at my age now. Um, but, but, it, but it just shows how just over the years in my, I trained differently in my fifties than I did in my forties. I still train hard, but I got to be smarter about the things I'm doing also because, you know, I'm at a more vulnerable position. Yeah. All I was going to say was with my PR and all that stuff is like, I don't need that, but it's also mm-hmm. a, conf- but it's a little bit of conference booster. Like, oh, okay. Is going up, and mm-hmm. it helps me. He says why I'm doing all this. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Set, set, set the goals, and yeah. you should always pyramid up. So let's say, like, so that was your personal best of, of one. But what do you typically train with? About one, one hundred five or so. Or 30, you had thirty. Like, if you're gonna do like eight reps, like, what do you, what are you working with? Um, if I'm doing, let's say, legs, for example, it was one twenty five. I usually do about around in a hundred range, usually. Right in the hundred range, and then you build up. You right, build up from there. So yeah. So yeah. if you if you were able to get like say up to say twelve to fifteen reps, then that might be the time when you want to add like put another ten pounds on the side, you know, and then you work from there. So you may go back down to like maybe like eight reps at that point. Yeah. But you work within that range, you build up, and then once you get to again twelve to fifteen reps with that, you add another ten percent on. So that's always you know how I've sort of staggered my training over the years. But, uh, you know, again, being smarter about, uh, you know, how I do things uh, to, to maintain this level of, again, fitness, you know, just mobility, just about just going up and down the stairs. Like I, I still run up the stairs. Usually if I can, if I'm in a building and I'm going upstairs, I'll run up the stairs and usually I take two stairs at a time. I still do that now, again, in my mid fifties. And that's just something that I just appreciate being able to do. Whereas I know some people, they got to do one stair at a time, hold on to the rail. No, I'll, I'll mother, still take, I'll, I'll still take flights of stairs going up the stairs, you know? And, and, and to me, those are things that again, do I have to do that or, but not necessarily, but it's always good to know that I have that in my back pocket. Again, God forbid, if I ha- ever had to do that, uh, uh, to, to be able to do things or just moving furniture around. Uh, like I was at my church, they had a function where they were setting up tables and chairs and different things. And, you know, you, you know, you need to, you know, they need men to, you know, use some muscle when you, you know, uh, sh- changing rooms around and whatnot. And I'm just, you know, happy that I have the fitness in order to be able to do things like that when called upon. Um, somebody needs help moving. They know they still call me. I know some guys, at my age or maybe a little bit older or whatever, I would, I would never call them to move because I know they just are not at the level of fitness to really help out without endangering themselves. So usually I, I call on guys that are half my age to, if I got to move something, but yeah, guys, if you're like, you know, make 50 approaching 60. Yeah. I'm not going to have you help me move a, you know, a sofa or something like that usually, but it's good when people say, okay, well, look, I got to call. I know who to call. I'll call Paul up. Cause he can, he can, you know, he can, he can help me with this. If I, if, if you were, bro. If I'm you were closer, you. listen, if you were, if I will put it this way, if I, if maybe if I would have met you first, if you were closer, you might've been able to pay me, uh, buy me lunch. I might've been able to come down and help you with that 85 cent inch TV. <laughs> but, well, but, what uh, I was going to say was when I move out of here, first person that came to my mind, I was actually talking to Stacey about this the other well, night. I go, I go, you know what? I'm going to find guys. I mean, I'm going to be a pain ass moving out here. Like, I go, and at least I got one person. He goes, who? Paul. He goes, He's gonna come up. He will come up for me. Don't worry. He will come up. There you go. So, so again, but being able to do things like that is is, is something that the uh, blessing you know, right now. Our age, yeah. And like I said, so so value. So I know where I know this guy. Where, where, actually, where. a good friend of mine. Um, we worked together. We trained together a little bit. Um, never sparred, but he he always struggled his way. Always struggled, buddy. He was a good mm-hmm. fighter. That's one thing I give him credit for. 
he came i saw him the first time in years in the gym it kind of like it took my mind but i saw online he posted he came down with um parkinson's disease mm. uh too many hits to the head pretty much oh. um and when i saw him i'm like holy shit he's in bad shape mm. and look at this like he should not be in here you know mm. what i mean he's a liability for himself into somebody else in here right now he's mm. lipping in here pretty much you know, like he shouldn't yeah. be in here yeah i know he, he loves to be in there but at some point in your yeah in your life in my life we're gonna to have to say, you know what? It's not worth it anymore. Exactly. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I, I agree. So I, I guess we're you know towards the end of the show. Um, again, thank you guys for stopping in. Again, Dino Dinosaur. Again, thank you for your comments. Thanks for Mandrell. Mandrell, we definitely want to bring you on because one of the things, that if you're still out there listening, we've had one show already on martial arts. Definitely and, too. Again, for thinking about mine too. Yeah, but certainly. The, the spaces were such where it's like we definitely needed a, another show. So we're looking for people who certainly who've had long study in the martial arts. And we certainly want to have a, a, a part two, certainly in this space for the gray area show. And so we would love to have you on. Um, so, again, I may reach out to you later on and, and let me know what your availability. Yeah, is. I'm going to reach out to you, too, brother, because I have yeah. a show I want you to invite. So it's time to get back to work. You had your fun. Now it's time to go back to work. <laughs> Shout out to him again. Congratulations again. And, yeah, and uh, you know, again, hopefully, hopefully that, get back uh, you know, you guys are getting back, uh, you know, you guys are establishing your, your new lives together. So that's a great thing. So appreciate you. But I, I think uh, with that, uh, any closing thoughts before we close out the show? Tune in. That's what I'm going to say. I, that's what I have tonight. Like, you know, hit the weights. Um, go to the gym. If you need help, get a trainer. Uh, mm-hmm. If you need a coach, um, Plug in. I am. I have. I have information of mine. Paul is all is is a psychopathy of this stuff. We're all here to help each other. At the end of the day, that's one thing about I love about the fitness world. It's a big family. At the end of the day, mm-hmm. um, except that um, Wednesday is the um, Spartan Arena. What do you? Hard what's your topic men. on uh, Wednesday? Men working hard. Men. Hard work. Okay. Okay. Yeah, working hard. Men. Okay. The one I like. The, and like nine thirty. Um, you're up, Paul. Okay. Well, again, thank you guys again, once again, for uh, joining us tonight. Again, certainly if you enjoyed the content of the show, please consider supporting the BMU network. Again, we give you content seriously seven days a week, Monday uh, nights. We have a, uh, the, you know, the uh, show with our pain Tuesday night, talk that talk Tuesday. We have sports Wednesday, JT show uh, follows up uh, after that uh, Thursday. We may have a slot, you know, typically we have coach K and Dr. Nakumbe, and I know the uh, doctor's taking a hiatus for a while, but, Hopefully we can, you know, certainly fill that space. The Friday night barbershop. Uh, we have, um, you know, a uh, wife Jenny on Saturdays, and now we have newly we have certainly Alexis on her show uh, on uh, on Saturday uh, Saturday nights. And again, we close out the 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 week on uh, we start the week on Sundays uh, with the Gray Area Show. So again, a lot of content being provided by BMU. Certainly we thank him for. You know, he's the one who does our banners. He yeah, does our intros. Uh, only does- one correction. Um, we tomorrow's two shows is our pain and after later on is uh, Grace is actually on nine thirty. So I'm actually and Grace. The Grace is joining, so she's joining the the uh, the network also. So we got a, we got so we got another smart yeah, side. <laughs> so we got another uh, 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 show for you guys. Looking forward to embrace the Grace her debut. Certainly on the BMU uh, uh, network. Certainly she's carved out a nice little space for herself in in social media, and certainly looking forward to her insights as well. Uh, definitely looking forward to that show. So again, so the BMU network is certainly providing content, uh, something for everybody. And again, um, <laughs> our pain, uh, shout out to you for coming out late. Yes. The gym is calling, but you got the gym right in your house. You don't need a call. You just need yeah, to go uh, to your next no, room. No, 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 no. Silver sneakers. He's eligible for silver sneakers. See, why are you doing that? man? <laughs> shout out, shout out to our, our pain. But, uh, but yeah, but you got a nice little gym in your house already. So all you got to do is walk down the hall and get your grind on. So you're you're already there. But uh, but again, but you know, please consider you know following uh, you know a look uh, check out the show tomorrow night and and again all the shows as as uh, they become available on the BMU network. We again so much appreciate your support. Thank you for joining us tonight. I am Mr. Bennett. He is grooming in reviews, aka the Ghost of Sparta, aka Peter, aka Bariotis. Have a great week. Have a great start to your week. We'll see you next time. Take care. God bless.